Live from Redmond Stadium in Jamaica, Queens, Sports Channel presents the Metro College Game of the Week. And what a game it should be. Undefeated St. John's plays Hofstra in the final game of the regular season. At stake, though, is an NCAA playoff berth for the winner. Hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Landers along with Dave Jennings on a cool, clear evening. And what a game indeed this should be, Dave. Despite the fact that Hofstra has lost a couple of games and St. John's is undefeated, Hofstra is ranked higher in the polls. Well, they are ranked higher because they have a tougher schedule. And very simply, this game is for the playoffs. Whoever wins this game goes to the NCAAs. Let's talk about the Flying Dutchman. We saw them impressively win over Fordham last week. Their club on a roll, and Rory Moss has been their big guy. You know, they can score points. They don't score them quite as fast as St. John's does, but Rory Moss is the guy. He gets into the flow. He gets going nicely, and they'll score some points. Defensively, they've struggled. They're going to have their hands full with this St. John's offense, which has averaged 41 points a game. Well, we've talked about it in the games we've done this year. Scott Sesney, McDermott, and another guy, Manny Tassanis, the running back. On any other team, he would be the star, but McDermott kind of over shadows them. Dave, both teams have had trouble stopping the other club. What kind of game do you expect today? <laughs> well, it could be a shootout. It's a little windy here tonight, which could calm things down, but maybe the team who's got the ball last is going to win. So the stage is set for tonight's showdown. We'll be back with more college football on Sports Channel. Sports Channel's Metro College Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Apple Bank. Apple Bank for Savings. We're good for you. Did you know that besides all the banking services you'll ever need, Apple Bank also offers low-cost savings bank life insurance. For example, if you're an Apple Bank customer who is a male, age 25, and a non-smoker, you will pay as little as $85 for the first year and receive $100,000 of yearly renewable term life insurance. Apple Savings Bank Life Insurance, a smart buy, and a small price to pay to protect your family's future. Apple Bank for savings, we're good for you. There's a motor oil that talks about quality, always has, always will. Well, Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any automobile manufacturer. Oh yeah, unlike the competition, Valvoline now has a $2 check that works just like cash when you buy six quarts or more of Valvoline motor oil at any Napa Auto Parts store. Look for your Valvoline check in magazines or your mailbox. Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. Humongous Gas and Electric? Hello, this is Bob Davis. Davis? Ah, yes, 24327A. What's your problem? Our gas heater is off. Do you smell gas, 24327A? Oh, no, 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 but we're freezing. Well, we'll be there eventually, but do call immediately if you smell gas. Futura Oil Heat, how may we help you? Tired of yes, big Mr. utility Joe. service hang-ups? I'll send your servicemen right over. Discover the warmth of oil heat. Back at Redmond Field on the campus of St. John's University. Barry Landers along with Dave Jennings. Right now, let's go down on the field, and here's our colleague, Carl Reuter. Thanks very much, Barry. You know, down here on the field, there is an air of excitement. The fans are waiting for this game. And earlier this week, I had a chance to talk with both coaches, and here's how they size up tonight's matchup. Yeah, this is uh, you know, what it's all about. This is uh, so exciting uh, to come down to the last game of the season. Uh, we're having a great year. Hofstra has rebounded, and... Uh, having a real super year so uh to come to the, f the finale uh head to head uh what could it, more could you ask for and uh even if both teams weren't having great years it would still be something special i'm going to go out there and coach as hard as i can and do as well as i can with a bunch of players who are going to do the same and i know they're going to do the same all i know the tangibles are still there they have a great quarterback they have a great receiver and man, if it's, if it's not the same in that manner, then really nothing else is important. We think we have a pretty great football team, too. And at this particular time, it's going to be a great matchup. Hopefully, Carl, the better team will win. Um, a game like this, you don't want to see it decided by uh, a flute play or elements, bad weather, or things of that nature. Let's hope the kids can just go out there and have a real good time, enjoy it, and whoever makes the, more of the good plays come out on top. Who's going to win this game? The best team. Well, just a few more comments about these two teams. You know, maybe they're going to play each other again, and maybe they're not. Maybe these two teams don't even like one another. But if you go back and remember in time, Ali didn't like Frazier, and Frazier didn't like Ali. But together, they made boxing what it was during their time, and that was greatness. And football fans yearn for rivalries. 
the bottom line, my opinion, St. John's needs Hofstra, and Hofstra needs St. John's. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Carl. It is a great rivalry, Dave Jennings. You can sense it. The crowd is here. The fans are here. The players are here. We're here. And uh, we hope this rivalry continues. There's been some talk that it might not continue. Well, you know, that's what, to me, sports is all about, the rivalries. And teams are so close, and they're so competitive. And, and obviously, this, this year, they're so equal. It would be nice to see them continue it. But uh, I'm kind of excited about watching this thing tonight. St. John's won the toss and deferred for the second half, so they will be kicking off. Posture receiving. And you see the deep men back there. They'll have Brian McGee, number 32, and Wayne Mars, number 42. Mars had a 100-yard kickoff return earlier. He'll take it at the 7. Across the 20, 25. And will be down as he crosses the 25 and around the 29-yard line. Brought down by Bobby Dunlop, where it'll be first and 10 for the Hofstra Flying Dutchman. Quarterback led, uh, of course, by Rory Moss and the running backs Jim Scully and Brian McGee. It's a good tandem. Frank Cuco, one of the uh, real fine wide receivers, along with Chris Coca's yellow. They'll be alternating. Wayne Morris as the wing back. And Walt Cavanaugh, the good tight end. Offensive line has done an excellent job providing protection. Look at this. No wing key to start the game. Now they'll send Morris in motion. Moss. Looking upfield for Cuco. He's got it. A big play. First down at the 45-yard line as uh, he has stopped at the 45-yard line after a big, big pickup. You know, it, it, it's almost the same start as the Wagner game when, when Hofstra came out. They're a, they're a wing T team, but this time they came out with two wide receivers, and it appeared as though St. John's might not have been ready. And again, Cuco just running downfield and running a quick in at about 20 yards, beating Travis Oselmo with a nice grab. That's the guy they will pick on. He is 5'7", the smallest player on the St. John squad. Millington in motion now. Looking again for Cuco. Reads off. The play goes over the head of Millington as he threw it down the far side as Kevin Conway was defending. The defense led uh, by the nose tackle, Kenny Cobb. He's one of the best around, number 64. And the linebackers, a good crew as they run a 3-4. Scott Beider and Pete Mayeski, good inside linebackers. And Vince O'Grady, number 39, is a guy with nine sacks. You'll see him doing a lot of blitzing. There's Hofstra coach Mickey Kwiatkowski. And the secondary is a good one. And now, there's Bob Ricca, St. John's coach. St. John's leads the rivalry three games to two. Double setbacks. Now they're in the wing two. And now getting the call. McGee fumbles the football. It's loose, and St. John's has recovered. So the first turnover of the ball game goes to St. John's as they turn it over, as they come up with a big turnover. Scott Fighter, the hit, and Rich Colangelo is also there. The freshman Scott Fighter and Rich Colangelo pointing their fingers. I'll tell you one thing, uh, Mickey Kwiatkowski sure didn't want this to happen because if you look at the numbers, St. John's has outscored their opponents in the first quarter, 136 to 21. There's the hit. There's no chance for, for Hofstra to get on the ball. Just a great recovery there. Rich Colangelo on the play. So the Redmen looking to take advantage, have it first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Scott Cessna is the quarterback. The pitch coming to Danny Chesantis. And he gets about seven or eight yards stopped as he got around to the 41-yard line by Vince Galley and the outside linebacker. Let's give you the rest of that uh, offensive unit. It's a dandy one. Not only is there Scott Cessna and Dennis McDermott, but Manny Tassantis is quite a runner. They've got a fine tight end at Kevin Holland, number 13. We, we both playing offense and defense tonight. And a wide receiver who has caught 30 passes in Anthea Malfitano, number 83. Second and three. Ball at the 41-yard line. Tassantis, the single setback. He gets the pitch. Gets a couple of nice blocks. Has the first down as he gets inside the 37. Stopped by Larry Brady and Vince Gallion. The strength of this Hofstra defense is the linebacking core uh, of Larry Brady and George Tischler. And they're healthy in the secondary for the first time. And that's going to be a key matchup today, especially with McDermott. And earlier, Paul Sibley's number five knocked down Anthony Malfitano, number 83. And uh, uh, he walked off the field of Malfitano looking back at Sibley's. But uh, number 26 is the guy at the bottom of the screen, McDermott. Right now he's single. Again, they stay on the ground on the sweep here. DeSantis gets maybe a yard. Jim McKee, number 73, big 6'3", 200. 70-pound junior ran him down. You know, as we talked about earlier, one thing that St. John's does so well, he hit the big play, and the big play guy is often number 26, Dennis McDermott, on the first couple of plays here. As you look at Bob Rick of St. John's, Hofstra has double-teamed McDermott on that last play they didn't. They can't continually double-team him because DeSantis and Amalfitano will hurt you. 
Second and nine. They do have double coverage at the bottom of your picture on him now. Chesney, the left-hander, looking deep, looking for McDermott on that pattern to the sideline. Incomplete. Sibley was over there defending on the play. He had also had help there from Mike McGinley, the safety. That's the favorite pattern that uh, McDermott likes to run, the post corner. He'll run down 15, 20 yards, start in towards the post, and then cut it back outside. But that's uh, here you're going to see the end of the play. He's cutting back to the post. But look at this good coverage. Excellent covered by Hofstra. McDermott's stats are startling. He has caught 43 passes this year, 20 of those for touchdowns, averaging 26 yards per reception. Third and nine. Now they go with a wing to the right side. Now they send McDermott in motion to the near side. Sassy looking and throws incomplete, looking for Manny Tassanis coming out of the backfield, but he overthrew him, setting up a fourth down play and a long uh, field goal attempt or possibly a punt here. I would think it would be a punt because St. John's right now, for some reason, they took the wind here in the first quarter, although when we came here earlier this evening, about three hours ago, it was a lot windier than it is right now. So Anthony Tricario, who does both the punting and place kicking, will be in. This year averaging 39 yards. He has kicked very effectively this year. Has plenty of time. Boots it downfield. McGinley will let it bounce over his head, go into the end zone. So Hofstra survives their first mistake as the defense holds, and they'll get it back first and 10 at the 20. Exactly. Hofstra almost uh, burned there by the turnover, but the defense does the job, and that's something that uh, I think the coach Anything the coach different? Okay. Three got three got sweeps real good. No one. three. What? He got plays. The big gap play, like we said. Now look. Two things. Look at Scott. Coach. That was Coach Ricca along with the offensive coordinator, Dutch Outterkirk. Back to the action right here. First and ten for Hofstra. Quick out to Cuco. He dives to the 25-yard line. Five-yard pickup. Cuco and Coca's Yellow are two fine receivers. We saw them do an effective job against Fordham last week. They're not uh, deep threats, but they'll catch the ball if it's catchable. And with the defensive backs on the first couple of series playing off, Rory Moss comes up the line, sees it is there, so throws the quick five-yard possession pass. Second and nine. Kevin Holland will make it second and five. Kevin Holland is in the ball game playing defensively now as a linebacker. Number 13, we'll talk about that in the move. He's normally an offensive player. Quick out to Cocos Yellow on the far side. Has the first down at the 35-yard line. Brought down by Kevin Conway. And a late flag. Go Redmond! Go Redmond! Go Redmond! Go Redmond! Rah! <laughs> a buddy of yours. Close Wrigley Field. More than a routine. Although the team members were only a few yards. The 49ers. The cable. She got it. Nine. This is Herman. Your work is bad. Courtesy of Dobler Chevrolet. Yes. Just a come to world headquarters in Running this network is for be prepared hard copy. It's a channel channel two. Try and get the defensive backs for St. John's to come up and bite on the play fake. That time, St. John's played it perfectly. Moss goes back three steps, pumps, but it didn't work. Hofstra's offense has really been in high gear over the last three games. Remember what you saw against Wagner about three weeks ago? They've been impressive lately. Moss, an excellent runner, chased by Holland from behind. As he's got Groot falling down, and we get a big first down play at around the 36-yard line. Kevin Conway finally brought him down with a nice block by Brian Beautiful McGee. Beautiful block by McGee. You get the fullback leading out for the quarterback, and that time, again, we talked about it. Kevin Holland, number 13, is in the game for, you'll see him in number 13. You'll see him towards the right. But watch this block by number 32 leading out in front. Just watch the block right here. We'll let it speak for itself. Plenty of room to run. John Krug was leveled on that play, number 17. So Hofstra on the drive here. Moss with time. Slant pattern. Great catch. Kevin Conway, the defender. But the nice catch for Frank Cuco gives him a first down inside the 20-yard line at the 16. I tell you, Kevin Conway got caught that time almost for holding. 
and just a simple pose pattern. Look at the catcher going up high for the catch, juggles it, but pulls it down. Great catch. Hugo, a junior from East Islip High School, the same high school that produced, of course, Boomer Esiason. And McGee trying to turn it outside, cuts back. Nice bit of running. He had no hole there and broke down, but Scott Beider stops him after he made about three or four on his own that play. Kevin Holland again playing on defense on this series, getting across the line but not making the play. Kevin Holland is the starting defensive uh, tight end, and you see Vern Gamble and the Hofstra coaching staff on the far side was the defensive end last year, switched to offense this year. Very good athlete. That's why he's in the game on defense. Second down and seven for the Flying Dutchman. Moss handing off to Cox, trying to turn outside behind a scully block, driven down at around the 10-yard line, or perhaps at around the 8-yard line. It'll be close to the first down. See where they mark the ball. In case you're just tuning in, no score, 10.29 to go here in the first uh, quarter. Barry Landers along with Dave Jennings at Redmond Field. The winner of this game almost assuredly will get an NCAA Division III playoff spot. Third and one as Coco's yellow lines up to the left. Hugo to the right. Al Hagowski now in the ball game at fullback. Look at the splits of the offensive line that really cut him down. And behind Hagowski block a big hole for McGee as he powers for the first down. Brought down by Rich Colangelo. Didn't mean to interrupt you there, Bear, but on that third and short, the offensive lineman brought their splits down to about three inches and just formed a wedge just to break it out for the first down. Now Michael Verzello, number 53, has come in for St. John's in their goal line defense. Coming out of the ball game, number 17, John Krug. So it's a goal-to-go -go situation for the Flying Dutchman. Okay. Power eye backfield. Handoff going to McGee. He dives toward the goal line. Didn't get in. Kenny Cobb tripped him up shy of the goal line. It'll set up second and goal for Hofstra. St. John's gives up about 170 yards to the opposition rushing the football. And Hofstra trying to rush it over right here. Again, look at those splits. Again, working out of the power eye backfield. McGee, straight ahead. He's in for the touchdown. And I'll tell you, Mickey Kwiatkowski has to be pleased. I, the, I, we'd have to look it up, but this could be the first time the St. John's hasn't scored first in one of their own games uh, that they played here at home, I'm sure, and that's a, a big plus for, for Hofstra to stay, get out in front. So McGee, who fumbled the football on the opening drive, redeems himself, scoring his sixth rushing touchdown. Joe Bush to try the extra point. It's up, and it is good. And I'll tell you something, extra, extra points are very important because we could come down at the end of this game to a near-tie situation. And neither team wants to tie because the tie may not get into the playoffs. We talked about the small splits on the offense line. Just power football. It's just you against me and just who's going to win. This time Hofstra does. Our spotter, Mike Booty, tells us it is the first time St. John's has not scored first in a game this year. It's power football. You got, you got to get low. You got to get low and underneath your man, and Bob Rick is uh, sure he's not real pleased right now, though with an offense that St. John's has. It's <laughs> good blocking go, by the guards, go. Greg Boudet and Leif Shea. Animated. Kowski, a little animated, similar to last week when they jumped off to the fast start. Speaking about fast starts, what a start they had against Fordham last week, Dave. You're in, you're in your animated mode, too, <laughs> folks. He's punching me again. i got to get some room here. Checking me into, the t into our monitor over here. <laughs> Kevin Conway is deep to receive the kick for St. John's, along with Manny Tassantis. Now, Hofstra special teams have had problems this year defending against some kicks. They have already yielded one touchdown. St. John's has returned two kicks for touchdowns. Manny Tassantis, a 95-yard kickoff return last week and an 85-yarder against Post. Conway backing up at the four. 25. And hit by John Zankin at the 25-yard line and brought down. Let's go down to the field. Here's Carl Reuter. All right, Barry, thanks very much. With me 
An innocent bystander? I don't know. O.J. Simpson here. O.J., how come you're at the ball game? Well, actually, I was in the neighborhood. I was at a, one of these homes for boys and girls from St. Christopher, Ottilie. Uh, homes, I do it once a week. I spend some time with the kids. And it was about three or four blocks away. And uh, one of the ladies that I'm working uh, with, uh, her brothers are one of the basketball coaches. And they said, let's go look at a little football. So we came out to look at a who little you rooting, Who are you rooting for tonight? Well, because I'm uh, with some of the uh, red men. And, you know, Luke on the second basketball coach is old buddy of mine. He used to work with me and the Hurts number one award. When we used to have a lot of the kids around the country in to help prepare them for college. So I came over to see him and to see the Redmen play football. Word was uh, circulating that 32 was going to go back on the field tonight. Not true? Yeah, we need the paramedics. We need more paramedics <laughs> than they have out here if I went out there tonight. OJ, good seeing you. Thanks for stopping well, by. Yeah, hey, I'm enjoying it. Looks like it's going to be an exciting football game. All right, Barry and Dave, OJ Simpson. I tell you, it looks like he could still play. <laughs> How about number 32, Brian right. McGee taking a page out of number 32's book. Right. And Manny Tassantis on that carry for moments ago for St. John's. A nine-yard pickup. Close to the first down, just about an inch. You're going to see a great trap block by number 67, Bob Dunlop. See him pull over here and watch the trap block. Bang. Great block. That's what opens the hole. Number 93 absorbing that blow was the young man from Nigeria, Ayula Akinui, who was in there for his pass rushing ability. You like his name? I like it. It has a lilt to it. What? <laughs> Sassy with a lot of time. Looking up the middle, he's got a man wide open, complete to Anthony Amalfitano inside the 45, a first down at the 43. We talked about the favorite pattern of McDermott, which is to run a post corner. Another pattern, what they like to do is get McDermott on the left side to clear it out and let Amalfitano come underneath begin and Amalfitano right there number 83 coming across the middle underneath just after McDermott had passed opening it up now Jason Miller number 12 in the ball game at the top of your picture as a wide receiver he's a freshman out of the eye formation they work on first and ten up to 43 St. John's trailing seven nothing option to five man front on the draw he's had it good hole still going push down picking up the first down at around the 32-yard line. Hit hard by Richard Walsh, but he shoved him forward enough for the first down. Again, another nice trap block by number 67, Bob Dunlop. He's on the right side of your screen. You should see him come across. And there's the block. DeSantis has carried five times for 32 yards. Come on, Matt. Toast, baby, toast. Destiny with a lot of time. Wide open again of Alfatano as he heads toward the end zone, pushed out and around the three. Mike McGinley ran him out, but Cessny with all day. You give the quarterback Rory Moss and Scott Cessny the time they're getting today, it's going to be a field day for them. Very similar pattern to before also. Well, Malfitano, number 83, he'll be coming from the left. Now, on the right side, you won't see it. That's where McDerm McDermott just cleared it out. And here comes Malfitano down here. Maybe we'll see him. Maybe we'll McDermott cleared it out. And plenty of time, as you said, to throw the ball. 30-yard pass, goal to go to Santis, who's run effectively. And the Redmen answer right back. Seventeenth touchdown for this guy who hasn't gotten a whole lot of recognition this year. Eleventh rushing <laughs> touchdown. He's had a great year. We talked about him in the opening. He'd have, he'd be a star on any other team. Not that he's not a star here, but he's overshadowed by Sesney and McDermott. It looked like Bill Osterman had a nice little uh, crackback block to open that baby up. Tricario to try the extra point, and these are important in this game, more so than any other game you'll play. Conway the holder. Carrio's kick is good, and we're tied at 7-7. We promised you offense. We've had 14 points in the first seven minutes. Thank you, saying That's all right. That's all right. Keep an eye on the left side of your screen for number 36 coming on the crackback block right there, right there, which opens up the play. In for the touchdown. Billy Osterman's number 36 for St. John's. We've got time out on the field. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jerry McDougal, and I'd like to thank all of you who've made the Apple Bank family program such a great success. As you know, being a member of the Apple Bank family means receiving many special benefits, such as reduced rates on loans, a personal family banker, free checking with interest, a low-rate Visa card, and much more. 
Join the Apple Bank family now and enjoy these special privileges today and find out why we say we're good for you at the Apple Bank for Savings. Mickey Kwiatkowski and Bob Ricker, they've gone at it five previous times. And St. John's lead 3-2, and this one right now is all deadlocked at seven apiece. First drive of the ball game, Hofstra McGee capping the drive, a 10-play, 80-yard drive that took less than three minutes, going over with a one-yard run. And then St. John's came right back, 74 yards. Again, not much time, a minute 25, five plays, and DeSantis with a three-yard touchdown run. I think run. this shows the difference between these two teams. St. John's will score faster. Not, <laughs> of course, not a whole lot faster, but they will score faster on some big plays, a couple of big passes to Amalfitano. And that's why Mickey Kwiatkowski would like to keep his offense on the field. Longer drives, because when another team's offense is off the field, they're watching the defense. They get a little antsy on the sideline. And that's what I'm sure Mickey Kwiatkowski, you can see him right there, would like to have happen. Let's have a nice long drive. DeSantis needed just 128 yards to break Dennis Blygen's single season record for most yardage, and he has 35 yards already. Coach Blygen. Coach Blygen, he's here. Uh -oh. Maybe O.J. will give him a couple of tips down there on his comeback bid. Morris will take it at the 13. 25. Spun around and fumbles the football, and looks like St. John's has recovered. Jason Biller, number 12 on the ball. Check that number 22 at James Borg, the substitute linebacker, coming up with the ball. Well, we just talked about Hofstra wanting to hold on to the football. The last time they, they lost it, they didn't get hurt by it. But you can't keep turning the ball over and, and hope to win. You had to know coming to this game, there'd be a lot of hard hitting. We've seen a couple of hard hits already, two turnovers. Let's see if let's see if St. John's goes for the big one right away. Fascinating. With a little play action, he'll screen it out. This is Osterman, the freshman, spun down at around the 40-yard line by Richard Walsh, the nose guard. Alayula Akinui was putting pressure on the quarterback. Hey, okay, the big play by Walsh. He was the one who smelled out the screen. And what they will do on the offensive line, they'll tell him, hold him for a second, then let him go, but don't let them know you're letting him go. Walsh smelled it right from the start, was right there. I kind of thought Oscar might go for the big play, which you often see after a key turnover. Uh, St. John's going to pick up. Hofstra has taken Chris Fink and Mike Barry, two 260-pounders out of the line of the gun with a quicker defensive line. Sassany looking deep. He's got a Malfa Tano wide open dive and catch inside the 20 and around the 17. A Malfa Tano beating Sibley's on the same pattern we like to see McDermott run, or McDermott likes to run. You run them down, inside, and out. 21-yard pickup for a Malfa Tano. He's been the story early. You see how wide open he is. And you know what's going to happen now that the Hofstra coaching staff is going to say, fellas, we got to do something about him. And then you'll see number 26 come to the game. Right down here at the bottom of your screen is McDermott. He's doubled right now. First and 10 for the Red They'll stay on the air. Cessney looking for the McDermott. He turned in, and the pattern went to the sideline. Sibley's was over there. Also defending on the play, John Walsh, the strong safety. Sibley's was reading that, again, that quarter pattern, corner pattern, which is what uh, McDermott likes to run. But for some reason, and McDermott turned up field. So let's see if we can keep an eye on McDermott now and see what he does. Downfield in and then out, but then he turns it up. Okay, he added a little twist onto it. These two guys can read each other so well. They've worked so hard to, in the offseason, McDermott and Cessny. Like one mind working. Cessny on second down, throwing toward the goal line. It'll be intercepted and around the two yard line. Mike McGinley turning it upfield and down and he gets to the 18-yard line. Sixth interception of the year for Mike McGinley and for the Hofstra Flying Dutchman defense, their 22nd pass they picked off. McGinley reading the cornerback, quarterback. They were going for a Malfatano that time. Not a good throw. And it, and McGinley standing back in center field looking for a Malfatano who they've hit several times here today. I'm sorry, look, there's the Malfitano, but th maybe they were thrown for uh, for Kevin Holland. But it was overthrown for him or a bad throw to Malfitano, but second turnover, and uh, Hofstra escapes. Now the uh, sweep. Here is McGee. One man to beat. He turns up field on Krug and wrestled down by Rich Colangelo, but not before he picked up over 20 yards on the play. For Leaf Shade, Knight leading that play nicely, and all of a sudden, big turnover. Look where Hofstra is. Number 66. See him pull here. Just follow him. McGee is right now. Seals it off, and McGee turns it upfield. Big gainer. 
So that gets Hofstra a little bit out of trouble. Boss on the keeper. Trip and falls forward. We have a flag on the play. Robert McKinney was tripping, and Mike uh, Jim Scully was leading the blocking on that play. That was a play that was effectively run last week against Fordham. Scott Sesney and Dutch Outiker, the offensive coordinator, talking things over. Holding offense. Ray Stripe with the call. The holding call holding. against uh, Hofstra will drive them back 10 yards. I'm sure they'll take the play, or the penalty, rather. It's our friend Ray Stripe. Does he have a microphone or not? <laughs> He didn't need one last, what was that, where was that, Stony Brook? Boy, he didn't need one last time. By the way, that was only the 12th pass. Holding oh. offense, still first down. Okay, Ray. <laughs> In case really. you missed it first down, folks. See if we can get some right? amplification for that, oh man. Cessney has been picked off only 12 times all year. And now we watch Moss on first and let's call it 20. Under pressure from Kenny Cobb. Knocked down. Scully, the intended receiver. And Kevin Holland, number 13, was the man who knocked the ball down. Pressure from Kenny Cobb up the middle, but that time, number 66, Leif Shea, who sprung the uh, McGee before, doing a nice job walling him off. Cobb putting pressure, though. We've seen him, that nose tackle. We, we saw him last time. We saw him, how low he got. Remember that? There's 64. Look at him. Let's see how low he gets on this one. Not too low right now. He's a six foot, 245 pounder. So he gets down low in that squat position. Second and 20. Moss will put it up, has time, dropping it to McGee out of the backfield. He's at the 35, trying to turn it outside, sheds a tackle down the sideline, and driven down at around the 41 yard line by Kevin Conway. Something that has haunted St. John's all year. We saw it in the post game about a month ago. Shoddy tackling, where they get their first bite of the guy and don't hold him. Good play that time by McGee. Watch him push off the tacklers, and again, a good job by Moss. Moss not looking for McGee. He's looking downfield for his wide receiver. Doesn't have him, so he hits a secondary receiver. Let's count it. Pushes off one here. See him push him off, and again, the field is a little bit wet, and now McGee's up the sideline. Now, there's a tackle right there. 27-yard pickup on that play. A little miscommunication. Scully fumbles the football, and St. John's has recovered for the third time. Rich Colangelo coming up with the ball and making the hit over there, rather. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You can't keep turning the ball over and hope to stay in a ball game when you've got an offense like St. John's coming on the field. I wasn't sure there was a little miscommunication there in the handoff, and it almost appeared as though it was down. And Mickey Kwiatkowski, he's shaking his head. He says, how many times can we, hey, oh, you can we turn it guys. over and not get scored upon? Especially to a big play team like St. John's. They've been opportunists all year. That's why they've averaged 41 points a game. McDermott is singled. DeSantis, big hole, close to the first down, a pickup of round nine before George Tischler, the inside linebacker, brought him down. There's uh, Mr. Steve Nieves, number 31, who recovered the fumble after Colangelo made the big hit. And uh, St. John's defense, very much like Hofstra, they bend but they don't break. They come up with a lot of big plays. That was the 12th fumble they've recovered this year. Second and let's call it about a yard. Single setback is to Santos. Three wide receivers. And DeSantis has the first down. Fights off the hit by Tischler. And then Larry Brady hit a uh, check it. It was uh, Osterman on the carry. Well, I'll tell you, Anthony Capek, number 66, an offensive guard for, uh, for St. John, just took Chris Fink right out of the play, opening up a nice hole. So the Redmen with the ball with 4.51 to go here in the first quarter. The game tied at seven apiece. Take a look at the line. Scott Sessler, the senior quarterback, with 31 touchdown passes. DeSantis down here in the slot. Now he goes in motion. And they'll stay on the ground with Osterman, the freshman fullback, who's only 170 pounds. George Tischler stops him after he picked up around four. Once again, another nice block that time by Anthony Kapek. Kapek has been the best offensive lineman they've had. He's just a sophomore, 265 pounds. He's had a super season. 
Bob Rickett told me he was the Barry Landers of the <laughs> offensive line. Mickey Kwiatkowski is worried about Mr. J. Beck. He's ready to look. Defensive stance. Hands on knees. Ready to go. Uh, Mickey was an offensive guard at the University of Delaware in his playing days. Now Greg Skopinski in the ball game as a tight end for St. John's. And double coverage on McDermott to the bottom of your picture as they set him out for Tano in motion. Nesny out of the backfield, complete to DeSantis. Good play by George Tischler as he got him around the ankles and held on. That'll be a pickup of maybe a yard. Credit the offensive line with excellent, excellent protection that time for Sesney, but also good coverage in the defensive backfield. Sesney doing the smart thing, looking for the secondary receiver, third receiver just coming underneath. Sesney is five for nine, 61 yards. There's the heart of the uh, team there, the linebackers. And they are so far off the ball, which is a trademark of this Hofstra defense. At least five or six yards off the ball, but they make the, most of the tackles. They are the number one and two tacklers on the team. Third and four. Testy on the bootleg. He's got Dunlop blocking for him. He dives forward and has the first down. Chris Fink had an opportunity to tackle Sesney for a loss on the play, which has been fourth down, but Sesney just put his head down and made a great play. Well, Sesney isn't in the running class of a Rory Moss, but he gets big yardage when he has to. You know something, folks? 2.52 left here in the first quarter, and St. John's has a zero on the scoreboard. When was the last time they were shut out? I'm sorry. 7-7. <laughs> My fault, folks. All right, David. First and ten for the Redmen. Ball inside the 35. They'll keep it on the ground at DeSantis, wrestling him down from behind. Johnny Walsh, who had lined up at the line of scrimmage, the safety. What I meant to say was one of the last time they only scored one touchdown in the first quarter. Well, uh, what was it, 136 points in the Remember first quarter? that first quarter? game we did when they played um, Iona? Iona, they scored 28 in about six minutes. And that was where the only points Iona had given up for quite a while after that. They played some great football this year. 7-2 record going into their final game. Second down and eight yards to go for the Redmen. Again, they come with twins to the left and right. Single setback, so four wide receivers here. Destiny looking incomplete intended for Greg Skopinski, the tight end. Vince Gallia, number 54, putting some pressure on. Boy, almost a great catch by Skopinski going down and one-handing it, but couldn't quite pull it in. And again, going with four wide receivers, this puts a lot of pressure on that defensive backfield, something we talked about, that defensive backfield. This is the first time they've been together for quite a while. They're all healthy or almost 100% now. Kevin Holland has replaced Skopinski in the ball game. Joe Zorid in the ball game out of the linebacking spot, number 43. Malfitano's uncovered. Well, there's a late coverage right there. Destiny with good time. Looking, throwing deep toward the end zone. And it's going to be intercepted. No, incomplete. Mike McGinley had it for a moment, number three, and just could not hang out of the ball as he hit the ground. And a couple of the Hofstra players appear shaken up down there in the end zone. Anthony Milano, number 28. I tell you, again, not a very wise throw by Sesney throwing into double coverage. There were three defensive backs down there and just really almost throwing it up, expecting his guys to come down with the ball. But here you'll see Hofstra has a better chance for the interception. Look at this. You've got three players right there. Amalfitano never had a chance, and there was a collision, almost an interception in the end zone. Well, you'll rarely see a Hofstra team turn the ball over three times in a game, no less three times in a quarter, but Anthony Milano is down, and also McGinley. They're looking at, it appears like they're looking at McGinley's back, and there's a very concerned Mickey Kwiatkowski. McGinley had a pulled muscle in his buttock and uh, played very well against Fordham, had 13 tackles last week. There's Milano, junior from Huntington Station, who played uh, a substitute role most of the year. Meanwhile, McGinley gets up and trots off, off camera, but... Milano's still down. Boy, knock on wood, they're finally healthy. The defensive backfield, and then on one play, two of them go down. And now here comes Milano, he's going off the field, so apparently just shaken up. And now it's a fourth down play for the Redmen, and again, to carry on the game, too far to punt. Uh, to to field goal, about eight. First punt was 36 yards. 
And he'll stand back at the 45-yard line. See, now from here, you're on the left hash. What I would do, instead of kicking it straight down the field, you've got all that wide open space to the right. Just hang it up over in the right corner. Especially, you got to believe Hoster's playing back for any kind of face. Chris Coca's yellow is the only man back. Cario will kick it right toward the end zone till he gets the corner. Oh, close. And he goes out of bounds inside the 10. Let's see where they mark it. At around the six-yard line. Okay, that's fine. Now, that was a very narrow angle because it was on the left hash, but that's a fine punt, putting it out of bounds. You want to get it inside the 10-yard line, so anywhere is fine. Cario doing a nice job this year. Dave, if you're Mickey Kwiatkowski, you got to breathe a sigh of relief. Three fumbles in the first quarter against an offensive club like St. John's, and you're only giving up seven points. And right now, Hofstra will put it in play inside their own 10-yard line at around the 6-yard line. 6 or 7. Rory Moss blocking out the signals. Junior quarterback from the Bronx. Now throwing in a diving attempt upfield. A beautiful catch that time for Chris Cocaziello. So we talked about the Hofstra receivers making some acrobatic catches, and they've done it so far. And that's the type of pass that you can throw even when your receiver is, is close to being covered because that time Conway, the defensive back, was just trailing number 80, Chris Cocoziello. So Moss sees that. He knows he can throw it there. Cocoziello can make the adjustment. Look at Conway. Not seeing it. Cocoziello comes back, and there's a catch. 18-yard pickup. Moss now 6 for 9 for 103 yards in this first quarter. He'll keep it in the air. As good protection overthrows the intended receiver, Pat Dolan, downfield. Steve Nieves was defending on the play. Pat Dolan was wide open. I don't know if he could have made a touchdown there, but just wide open. There were three receivers, one down the left, one down the right, and Pat Dolan up the middle. That was wide open. They have two big tight ends who played well against Fordham last week. Walt Cavanaugh at 6'5", and Pat Dolan at 6'3". Jason Williams, the All-American candidate for St. John's on crutches. He'll be back in action later this year. Moss in trouble, and Rich Colangelo wraps him up. Big defensive play by Colangelo. Loss of five on the play. One thing you have to do as a defensive player when Rory Moss has the ball, you have to honor him. He's a guy who is looking to run the ball. Colangelo doing a great job coming across, going right for the quarterback and nailing him for a big loss. Colangelo is playing with a banged up ankle, played very little against Georgetown last week and is regarded as only about 80%. I'd like to see what he looked like at 100%, Dave, after that play. Third and 13 for Hofstra. Passing situation. Nickel back in for St. John's. Moss rolling. Going upfield. Again, completed around the 40-yard line. This time it was uh, Chris Cocosiello making the catch once again. John Krug, the defender. But a first down for Hofstra. Smart play by Cocosiello, knowing where the first down marker is, giving himself enough room to come back for the ball, which as a receiver you want to do. Now Moss is going to roll out to the left, and that's the side... He gets good protection. Now, see Cocosiello come back, get hit, but have enough room to still make the first down. Cocosiello with three receptions for 45 yards. First quarter will come to an end on that uh, attempted play. So, surprisingly, we have only seven points each in the first quarter. But the fumbles by Hofstra haven't hurt them all that much. So, we've got a dandy going. Stay tuned for college football on Sports Channel. I'm a busy guy, and my time is valuable. Keeping in touch is important to me, so I need a cellular phone. Naturally, I go to the Wiz, where Cellcom and the Wiz take care of everything. There are no hidden costs. Buy your cellular phone from the Wiz and get a free antenna, installation, and choice of 9X or Metro One service at no extra charge. When you need a cellular phone, the Wiz and Cellcom are the singular source for everything cellular. Nobody beats the Wiz. Express mail from your post office has a whole fleet of 727. We deliver, we deliver. A guaranteed morning delivery. We deliver, we deliver. And an overnight price of just 875. We deliver, we deliver. Speed, convenience, price. It's a package only we can deliver. Express mail from your postal service. We deliver for you. Back at Redmond Field on the campus of St. John's University in Jamaica, Queens, New York, Barry Landers along with Dave Jennings. 
We're tied at the end of the first quarter at seven apiece. Dave, looking quickly at those uh, first quarter stats, anything jump at you? Well, the thing that jumps at me is we talked about the three turnovers by Hofstra, which would indicate, well, St. John's got to be ahead, but 7-7 seven, seven tie, so Hofstra has to be pleased. Both teams moving the ball, 174 yards for Hofstra and 121 for St. John. Rory Moss with the first down play up at around the 40-yard line. Keeping it in the air, looking, and it is going to be batted down incomplete. The intended receiver, Pat Dolan, the tight end, Pete Mayeski, defending on the play, the inside linebacker, number 34. He and about four other Redmen were right all over Dolan, but Dolan somehow was free, and it was drilled in there. I thought that should have been caught. Dolan caught three passes last week, including a 20-yard touchdown, but I guess the two biggest plays he made were at the end of the game when they tried the onside kick, and he came up with both of them. Now they go with a slot right formation. Win backs. Getting the call is McGee. Not much off the left side of the line. Robert McKinney, number 81, played it well. The defensive end. And Chris Lynch was the lead blocker there, number 65. And a great, great block by the fullback Scully to take out one of the defenders, but there were too many Redmen there. Now Hofstra will make three substitutions as Chris Coca's yellow comes in the ball game. He'll come out along with Wayne Morris at the top of your picture as a slot right formation. Pat Dolan now in the ball game as a tight end. Third and seven for the Flying Dutchman. Tied up at 7-7, seven, seven, early second quarter. Moss has time. Now running out of time, trying to get away from Kenny Cobb, but he pulls him down. However, there is a flag on the play. We may have an offensive lineman downfield. Uh, <clears throat> Mike McConaughey was across the line. Don't know if that's what they're going to call, though. If it is against uh, Hofstra. No, 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 one of the Hofstra people is calling it against St. John's. Let's hear. Defensive holding. Mm, that one hurts, especially on third and seven. Now, that should be an auto. Now, what are they going to do? Isn't that an automatic first down? It should be. We'll wait for Ray's drive to officially mark it. And it will be up at around the 49 and a half yard line. But it's not an automatic first. Yes, it is. Uh, it is. Okay. <laughs> The only reason I said that because they kept the uh, the number on the down marker as a three when they brought it up, and now they've changed it. thought it was an automatic first. So a key mistake on the part of the St. John's defense coming up with the penalty. And uh, Hofstra gets new life here with 14-14 to go in the second quarter. In case you're just tuning in, Hofstra jumped in front going uh, 80 yards in 10 plays, capped off by McGee's one-yard touchdown run. St. John's came right back, a 74-yard drive. Manny Tessentis with a three-yard run. And that's the way we stand with the extra point good for both clubs. Ray Barberite lines up in a slot right formation, along with uh, Frank Cuco at the top of your picture. Both are speedsters. Barberite, the fastest player perhaps on the team. Number 81. Moss will keep it on the left side to McGee. Not much in the way of blocking. Pete Mayeski came up nicely from and the inside line. And a late flag. Flag laying on the 48-yard line. First quarter was pretty much penalty-free. Holding against Hofstra. Hey, Scully is a blocker, though. When he leads up in there, he'll knock over people. Good size at 6'2", 225. Was a tight end. Began the season as a tight end. Great wing back. Moved into the running back spot when Bobby Whaley left the team early. And of course, a couple of weeks ago, Tommy Schiminger, another one of their running backs, broke his leg. They were fortunate to have some depth. Ray doing? We're not hearing Ray on our headset. Hope he was telling uh, the folks at home. First and long yardage right here. First and let's call it about 20. Moss will screen it out. Complete on the far side. Millington trying to get away from the tackle of Kevin Conway, but Conway, who's been quite a story with nine interceptions this year, one of their leading tacklers, third on the club, just wouldn't let him get away. Just using the block from Coco Ziello out there, but Coco Ziello more of a receiver than a blocker, and it was just a short game. Six-yard pickup, but they've got a long way to go for the first down. So let's call about second down and 14. Clock ticking, 13.09 to go in the first half. Off to using a lot of these slot formations, getting away from the wing tee. 
This time they've got Cuco and Morris to the left side at the bottom of the screen. On the draw, delay, trying to find some room is McGee, but that St. John's defense shut it down. Scott Biter, the freshman inside linebacker, number 57 breaking up the play. So St. John's defense coming up big on that last uh, series. First and 20 going with a short pass, second and 14 going with a draw. Now they're faced with a third and long, so uh, I think they're going to take it downfield on this play. Let's call it third and 13, passing situation. St. John's has put an extra defensive back in the ball game here. Well, says Todd Conway was coming, and it is going to be complete to Ray Barberite. And he has the first down at around the 37-yard line. Kevin Holland was blitzing from an outside linebacker spot. Number 13 almost back to Moss before he unloaded, but he got the pass off. And that puts Scott Bider, a linebacker in coverage. And you'll see how open the receiver is. Now look at Moss, plenty of time looking to the right, about to get hit. And here's Ray Barbright bringing it up, first down. You want to know what it's like to be a quarterback? Watch him after the ball's released. Bang, bang, bang. Welcome to the backfield. Barbarite, by the way, catching his fifth pass of the year. Big first down for Hofstra. Quick out to Morris, could not hang on to the ball. John Krug was right there, the strong safety. And I have a feeling Morris knew he was about to get hit, so he tried to hurry the catch. Go. That happens to you. Here we go, and the thing is, and although he wasn't hit hard, if you're going to get hit, you might as well catch the ball because it doesn't hurt as much when you do. Mickey Krakowski, the cheerleader on the sideline, took off the headsets, as we pointed out last week. He's just having some fun out there along with the kids. Second and ten after the incompletion. Moss quickly to Millington. Millington wrapped up by Conway, fumbles the ball as he was stripped, goes out of bounds. Let's see if they give the forward progress. They'll call it a fumble. They got a couple of extra yards on the play. A break there for Hofstra. They nearly fumbled it away for the fourth time. Now, did he fumble that forward out of bounds? It looked that way. If he fumbled it forward out of bounds, it should come back to the point where he fumbled it. Because he can't gain yardage. But again, Conway late coming over. Let's see what happens to the ball. Fumbles it. Goes out of bounds, gains about two yards out of bounds. I think maybe they should bring that back a couple yards. Eagle-Eye Jennings up here. Have to tell Ray Strife about that at oh, halftime. Look what they did. <laughs> there we go, David. They do move it back. So it's third and about four and a half, or maybe five. Moss trying to get away from Palowski, and he's taken down. Omar Gonzalez and Frank Palowski, but there is a flag on the play. Most likely offensive holding, which should be refused, forcing Hofstra to have to punt the football. We got holding, offense. That, call that a coverage sack right there. The coverage sack forced Moss to have to take more time, and then there was the holding, and then the sack. Frank Palowski, one of the leaders on the sack squad. That is his fifth sack of the year, number 63. It'll be the first punt for Joe Bush as he stands back inside the 50, down at around the 46-yard line. Anthony Amalfitano is deep at around the 10-yard line. Bush with plenty of time. Line drive kick. It's McDermott downfield, rather, to uh, watch it bounce. And it will blow dead inside the 10-yard line at around the 6 or 7. So uh, St. John's backed up across uh, near the goal line. And as we've talked about, you let the ball hit, and Amalfitano didn't have a, a big chance to catch that because it was such a low kick. So Hofstra gets a little lucky on that one as the ball low kick hits and goes inside of 10, forcing uh, St. John's to have to go a long way. But, of course, they're known for the big play. Well, we saw in this very field a 95-yard touchdown play, Dave, in the very first game we did here. Scott Sessney to Dennis McDermott. That's close to what the uh, yardage is right here. McDermott has not caught a pass so far in this ballgame, by the way. Keep it on the ground for Tessantis. Not much of a hole. Hofstra submarining and breaking up the play. Larry Brady, George Tischler, the linebackers. Tessantis. Brady and Tischler. Now Jason Viller comes in the ball game for Anthony Amalfitano as a wide receiver. Those guys related, Brady and Tischler, it seems like we call them together a lot. They're quite a duo, both juniors. Brady, uh, captain as a junior, captain of the defense. 
Diller lined up as a receiver to the bottom of your picture. Single coverage against these Samores. McDermott has double coverage at the top. Here's DeSantis trying to turn outside, turns the corner, and he spun down his late flag throw, and Anthony hey, DeSamore is coming in. Got around Chris Duffy, that's the guy they've been trying to attack on that play. They figure he was the weak link defensively on that front five, number 31, as DeSantis was able to skirt around the end. And Duffy was there, but just couldn't make the play. You'll see number 31, you'll see him come up, be in good shape, but DeSantis is kind of fast. 31 will be off to the right side, he's be right there, but then DeSantis runs outside. Now you'll see the you'll see the face mask a little late, right there. That looks like a pretty tough one. That could have been, that's a 15 yarder. Look at this. Face mask violation. Defense, first down. Ray Strife with the call, so St. John's backed up inside the 10, now up at the 35-yard line. 10.31 to go, first half. We're all tied at 7-7 on our Sports Channel Metro College Football Game of the Week. Osterman and DeSantis, the running backs behind Scott Sesney. DeSantis. And he falls forward for maybe a two or three yard pickup to around the 39 yard line. Jim McKean and Vince Gallion combining on the stop. You know, we've seen Scott Sesney throw one interception, almost throw another. And there's a player for Hofstra on the field right now. And, out, and down here, St. John's backed up. They've come out with a lot of running plays. I wonder if the Coach Ricky just wants to get Sesney a little more confidence back because he hasn't thrown the ball smartly on a couple of passes. Well, the double coverage has denied them access to McDermott. He has not caught any passes, and they really haven't, uh, well, they threw a couple his direction. Sesney today, 5 for 11, 61 yards, one interception, one almost interception, but those two passes which he threw for interceptions were not well thrown, not smart throws. Injured player is the young man from Nigeria, Ayula Akinyui. Played his high school ball on Staten Island. Keep your eye on number 92 and see if we can find out how he fell. And Looks like he took a knee in the back from one of his own teammates. A lot of bodies in there flying around. Now check it, it's Richard Walsh, I beg your pardon, number 92, who is the injured player. 5'10", 245-pound senior from Locust Valley, Long Island. Well, they're looking at his right leg, and you just hate to see this, and we won't speculate as to the nature of the injury, but you can often tell how to what extent it is when he gets up and he gets off the field. If he puts weight on it, it's a good sign. If he can't, it's not a good sign. There's Mickey Gwakowski coming out to take a look. Dave, one reason why St. John's has uh, probably kept the ball on the ground is that Hofstra's defense has yielded a lot of yards on the ground this year, giving up over 200 yards a game to the opposition. By the same token, they're a big play team. They like to pass the ball, and uh, they, they hit him off the tunnel early, which should open up in Dermott. Well, so far, they haven't been able to get it to him. In case you're just tuning in, the game is tied at seven apiece. In a first quarter in which Hofstra fumbled the ball away three times, they did take the early lead as Brian McGee uh, scored on a one-yard run. That culminated a 10-play, 80-yard drive. And then Manny Tessantis came right back for St. John's as the Redmen drove downfield 74 yards in five plays, and he scored on a three-yard run. So we expected a lot more offense, a lot more points on the board up to this point, but the defense has played pretty well for both teams. So far today, St. John's has rushed 14 times, 77 yards, five and a half yards a crack. Of course, as we pointed out at the top of the broadcast, the winner of this game will more than likely get an NCAA playoff spot. It's getting a little nippy out here, Dave. Temperature down in the lower 40s right now. I don't feel very cold. We're nice and warm up here in the booth, but our Carl Reuter, who's down there on the sideline, now, Where be. is Carl? I saw him getting OJ's autograph before. We haven't, haven't heard from him for a while. I don't see him. Dave, we've seen a couple of injuries here at Redmond Field. Mickey Kwiatkowski looks on. Come on, Ralph! What about the players in terms of Mobetta here as uh, Walsh will get up? Good. Putting pressure on himself, which although he's, he's limping off, that's a good sign. Not to say that he's not injured, but how often do you see a player have to be carried off? That's a real good sign, so we'll keep our fingers crossed for Mr. Walsh. Hey, the question I was going to ask you, as a former player, a delay, 10-minute delay like we just had, it's such an emotional game. What impact does it have, if any, on, on the team? It shouldn't have much, especially in this type of game where neither team has the momentum, neither team has, uh, has an edge right now. 
Second and five, Mike Barry has your place. Richard Walsh in the lineup, number 77 at nose tackle. Osterman and DeSantis, the running back. Here's DeSantis looking to throw downfield. He's got a mouth of tunnel there as he collided with Mike McGinley. The ball popped in the air. There's a flag on the play, however, down at the 37-yard line. Well, there's the first gadget play of the day. We wouldn't be surprised to see some gadgets here tonight, and that was the first one. Defensive pass interference. We have defensive pass interference. Now, they won't bring the play down to where the ball is. I believe it's a 15-yard penalty. And again, here's Malfatano trying to sell it for the block, and he runs past. And the ball kind of floats up in the air, and here's, well, that's, that's close. I mean, that's about as close as you can get. But the official said that it was an early hit. Tough call on Mike McGinley, the former pass all interference, cross defense, player. Pass interference, defense, first down. Again, Manny DeSantis does it all, throws the ball. Throws a little short, though. That's the only thing on that one. Threw it a little short. That was a favorite play for Dennis Blygin when he was a star here back in the early 80s. Along with Todd Jamison. Draw play for DeSantis. Feels his way and has about seven yards before he was tripped up by George Tischler. Number 34. So Manny DeSantis has run the ball effectively as he closes in on the 1,000-yard mark. You just you mentioned it before. You just have that feeling that Dennis McDermott is going to make a, an impact on this game at some point. Well, the interesting point is, Dave, he's only caught 43 passes, but almost half of those, 20, have been for touchdowns. Big play receiver. Second and short yardage here. DeSantis has the first down. Look at it, it takes five or six of the uh, Hofstra players to bring him down, hit by Jim McKean and, and a whole host of other blue and white. And Chris Fink, number 84 defensive end on that side, just stamped the ground because he dove at DeSantis' feet, would have had him for a loss. But again, DeSantis is a great athlete and just stepped over it and went downfield. DeSantis came in just 305 yards shy of the all-time career rushing record held by Blygen. Mike Casiulo in the game, replacing Jim McKean in a pass rush situation here. Good drive here for St. John's. Cessna with little play action, buys a lot of time, looking up the middle, incomplete. Amal Fatano had it bounce off the numbers. He was there, and the defender was there, but he should have had it. John Walsh was defending on the play, number seven. You know, something we've talked about, I've talked about, I'm a big fan of catching the ball with your hands, then bring it in, rather than try and trap it against your chest. And Amalfitano, he's the type of guy who's got the good hands. You see it here. He tries to jumps up and cradle it into his chest. He's the type of receiver who can do it and didn't do it that time. Catch with your hands, bring it in. Second and 10 for St. John's with 8.50 to go here in the first half. Deep drop by Cessna, looking up the middle, overthrows his intended receiver, Dennis McDermott, at the 20-yard line. Vince Gallian, number 54, was uh, trying to get to the quarterback that time. Here, the ball kind of floated on Cessna that time as McDermott ran downfield. Looked like he was setting up the post corner, but stopped and came back to the ball, and the ball was a high throw. Cessna has had an excellent percentage of completions, 54%. 5 for 13, including two interceptions and only 61 yards here in the first half. One interception, I beg your pardon. Third and 10. Hops just put an extra defensive back in the ball game. Osterman in motion. On the draw to Santa slips as he was starting to get ahead of steam underway. George Tischler was right there to make sure he wouldn't get up. And there, we talked about it earlier, the field is a little wet, and DeSantis trying to cut back on his inside foot, and you don't have any, you have all your weight on the other foot, and that time it just went out from under him. Mike Barry got in with some good penetration. Let's see if they try a field goal here. Anthony Chicario will attempt a field goal from the 38-yard line. It'll be a 48-yard attempt. Slight wind at the back. He has already kicked a 48-yarder this year. Good snap, the kick on the way, it's up, and it is good! <laughs> 
Anthony Jacario with his fifth field goal of the year. He's five for eight. We saw him win a ball game against CW Post a few weeks ago with a big field goal. He puts his team in front right here. Hey, that was good from about 58 yards. What was that, 48 yards? Jacario getting everything into it. Maybe we'll see just how far it goes. Look how high it is. Nice and Perfect. straight. Maybe we can see from this distance. It's way back there. Way back there. That ties a school record that he holds. He kicked one earlier this year, 48 yards. Is it good? Is it good? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's not. He knew even, right away. Yeah, kickers know that stuff. That one split the uprights, as they say. We've got time out of the field. 8.03 to go. The Redmen lead by three. CBS FM 101, celebrating 17 years as New York's oldies station. Hi, New York. I have a lot of friends up here at CBS FM. Thanks for listening. There's only one radio station for me, CBS FM. How about you, Jay? Listen to that voice, and you can hear it on CBS FM, my favorite radio station. CBS FM 101.1. We play your favorite oldies. But I mean... Well, each week during our game, Sports Channel pauses to flash back into local football history. Tonight, we look back at the classic 1983 confrontation between Hofstra and St. John. Over the years in the many heated battles between St. John's and Hofstra, it's the simple bounce of the football that often determines the winner. In the 1983 game, St. John's led 24-21 with 2.27 left to play when Nick Casso was stripped of the ball. Hofstra recovered this costly turnover, and on the very next play, quarterback Rich Cadella made St. John's pay. Cadella rolling, looking downfield, throwing wide open to Steve Mady. Mady's got it. <laughs> That's down. He's down at the 20. That's 15, Samillo chasing it is a touchdown. <laughs> Steve Mady's 70-yard touchdown catch gave Hofstra a 28-24 comeback win. Shocking the Redmen and their fans. And Steve Mady right now is Dr. Steve Mady. Just completed Columbia uh, School of Medicine. And uh, quite a story. Both schools proud of the football players here in Division Three. And Steve Mady with a big catch there. Anthony Chicario driving this one. Has the wind at his back. You can see the effect of the wind as he drove that one about seven yards deep in the end zone. It'll be a touchback. That'll be first and ten for Hofstra. So the wind definitely blowing left to right. And Tricario getting the benefit of the about 15-mile-hour breeze. So Hofstra trailing by three. We'll put it in play first and ten at the 20. Quickly on the field, here's Carl Reuter. Barry, thanks very much. Just came over from the Hofstra sideline, had a conversation with quarterback Rory Moss. I said, have you underestimated the St. John's defense and them being that tough? He says, I never underestimated them. He said, they're playing so well in such a big ball game. He said, they have come to play tonight. Barry? Thank you, Carl. First and ten for Hofstra. Trailing by three. Bootleg play for Rory Moss. He's had the first down. Everybody was looking to the left, and Rory Moss was scampering to the right. And he picked up about 15 yards before Rich Colangelo brought him down. For the outside linebacker or the defensive end on either side has to be aware of the, of the naked bootleg by Moss. He's a good one. Moss scored a touchdown on a similar play, naked bootleg against Fordham last week. He's carried three times for 42 yards. Came into the ball game with 250 yards rushing and five touchdowns. First and ten for the Flying Dutchman with seven and a half minutes to go. Moss will screen it out. Cox at the 30 and will get back maybe to the line of scrimmage, maybe to the 34. That should go as a running play because that was a backward pass. Vince O'Grady was the defender on the play. Young man who has filled in for Phil Bichetti. He's done a great job. Bichetti was their best linebacker for most of the year, got hurt. And O'Grady has responded with nine sacks leading the club. Moss has Cuco as a flanker to the right, working out of the wing tee this time. Moss with good protection, throwing incomplete. The tight end, Walt Cavanaugh, had it in his hands as he turned back and couldn't hang out at the 50-yard line. We had Barbarite that time and Cavanaugh running down right with each other. You won't see it here. Moss looking and now throwing. Let's see if he should have caught this pass. Throwing a little behind him. Tough, tough, tough catch. 
Kavanaugh, big guy, big target, 6'5", 230 pounds. According to Mickey Kwiatkowski, could be one of the finest tight ends they've ever had at Hofstra when he gets finished. Third and let's call it about 10. St. John's looking that they were going to blitz. Moss looking up the middle. Complete upfield for Dolan, the tight end. Has the first down inside the 45 at the 42. And there's another flag on the play. Late flag. That time Dolan, the tight end, lined up on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Runs down and just a post pattern just across. A pretty pass by Moss. Just right. drilling it in there. Got a face mask violation. A five-yard penalty. 24-yard pickup. Plus five. So Hofstra getting the advantage of the defensive breakdown there. Defensively, the penalty. Now Kevin Holland, number 13, checks into the ball game, replacing John Krug. Holland seeing double duty. Keep an eye on Dennis McDermott was expected to play some as a defensive back also. Moss turning it here. Cox trying to go outside, spins off a tackle. Down at the 30, picked up around seven. O'Grady on the tackle. And one thing you hate to see any defensive player do, and of course they don't do it intentionally, is grab the face mask. Dolan on the last post pattern, turning it upfield, and there's the face mask. Unintentional, you just hate to see it. Second and two after the eight yard pickup. Hofstra trying to regain the lead. Six minutes to go here in the first half. They trail 10 7. Scully. Hasn't uh, seen much action as far as carrying the ball directly behind Rory Moss now. Gets the uh, fake and gets the call. And Kenny Cobb wasn't faked out either. It was uh, Scott Vider, the linebacker. Well, Kenny Cobb that time was blocked by Stefan Chinaski, the center, and Cobb won that battle. Fans all over the fence here. Sellout crowd, standing room only. And this rivalry, as we said earlier, one of the best around. Happy our little bank sponsor. Hope you're enjoying the action here on Sports Channel. Third and four. Boss looking. High pass for Cuco. Incomplete. Kevin Conway was defending on the play number 44. Well, that's a tough one to have to pull down because you know you're going to get nailed. And Rory Moss would have preferred to have thrown that a little bit lower. And now fourth down, what do you think? I bet you I bet you Hofstra goes for it. Well, if they went for the field goal, it would be a 48-yarder into the wind, although Joe Bush has kicked a 50-yarder. They're not going to go for it here. Cocos Yellow and Morris line up to the right as the big crowd looks on on a big fourth and four play. Go, Kevin! Boss rolling to the wide side, has time, throwing, and it's going to be complete inside the 20-yard line and around the 18-yard line. Coco's yellow with the reception and a big fourth down play for Hofstra. Boy, big play by Mickey Kwiatkowski. He's deciding to go for it. He's got to be pleased. I think he said, look, I want to stay in this ball game. Don't want to give St. John's the ball back. Coco's yellow running downfield. Moss rolling out to his right to get some time. A slot formation on the right side. Look at the pass and the catch going down, catching it with his hands. Coco's yellow had a big game against Fordham last week. Five catches for 69 yards. And this is McGee, has a block, dives forward inside the 10-yard line. Kevin Conway finally knocked him down, but not before he picked up big territory. Pat Kerwin and Mickey Kwiatkowski talking things over with Ray Barbarite, who'll be running in the next play. Second and three for Hofstra as they try to take the lead here with 4.18 to go. First half, they trail 10-7. Moss looking. Cocos Yellow's out there. Kevin Conway got beaten by Cocos Yellow just running an outside pattern and just going for it. A pretty pass by it. Very important nice to lay it up there. Nice Rory shirt. Moss outside. If you don't jam the receiver, the receiver's going to have a good chance of running right by the defensive back. 14th touchdown pass of the year for Rory Moss. Key extra point here for Joe Bush. John Sankin is the holder. Remember, he ran in one last week. Here's the try. Looks good, and it is. Hofstra 14, St. John's 10. 
Okay, each extra point is very important. All the points. Vicky's pumped. Okay, you're going to see a pretty pass, and on the left side, we won't see the pattern right there. See how far, how wide open he is? Coco Ziello just getting open outside, and it's one-on-one. It's -on -one. He'll just go by Conway. Conway doesn't have much of a chance trying to get the ball, but a nice pass by Moss. Coco Ziello has already caught five passes for 74 yards and a touchdown. Make them go to something else. We're not stopping them. He's just chasing the Coach Rick is saying we got to change our defense. Let's see what Mickey says. Go defense! Yeah, defense! Oh, every turn! <laughs> There's Mr. Brian McGee and Mickey Krikowski. Early in the year, he wasn't so happy about Brian McGee. What's Mickey doing there? Again, I don't know. Bob Rick is saying, uh, Kevin, he's saying he's just chasing him. We've got to change that. He's talking about Conway just chasing Coca Ziello. Didn't give him much help out there. Well, again, Hofstra has to be concerned with this kick. Manny DeSantis has returned two for touchdowns this year. Kevin Conway has also averaged over 20 yards in return. DeSantis will take it at around the 12. 25. And taken down as he got close to the 30-yard line. Brought down by Bill Masterson, number 35. So St. John's trailing 14 to 10 with 407 to go in the first half. We'll put it in play. Hofstra going 10 uh, plays, 80 yards, under four minutes for the go-ahead touchdown. And Coca's yellow catching his sixth touchdown pass of the year. We've got Cessny to, to Billy Osterman, and he bounced off one tackle, but the freshman wrapped up by a fired-up defense, Vince Gallion. John Walsh coming up from the secondary, the strong safety. And Chris Fink doing a nice job standing up Anthony Kapek, and that was the play. Chris Fink at defensive end. Kapek switched to guard for this game. They, both teams moved around some of their offensive alignment for this matchup tonight. They wanted key matchups. Mike McConaughey for Hofstra was moved around from guard to tackle, and Kapek moved from tackle to guard to St. John. Second and 10 for the Redmen. McDermott in motion has not caught a pass in this first half. Sassney looking, has McDermott open, drills it to the sideline, and now he has this first reception for the first down at around the 41-yard line. Hey, Anthony D. Samores, number nine, the defensive back, was saying, I'll give you anything in front of me, <laughs> but you're not going to beat me deep. And that time, as you call it, McDermott going motion from right to left, turning it upfield, and then just stopping for the first down. D. Samores playing that very, very soft. Call it a lot of cushion with a capital C. <laughs> Now Jason Biller has replaced Anthony and Alpha Tano in the ball game. McDermott on the short side of the field, top of your picture. Here you see him. All-time leading receiver for St. John's in every category. Coming in motion now. Sassy, a left-hander rolling to the side, looking for the sideline, overthrows McDermott. I'll tell you, great coverage by Walsh that time. Excellent coverage by Walsh. Running downfield was number 12, Jason Biller, and chasing him was McDermott, and McDermott uh, was covered beautifully by Walsh, forcing Cessny to have to throw it high and out of bounds. And there's a look at John Walsh, the senior from Brooklyn, reckless player who was banged up, bad shoulder, he's playing with a lot of injuries. Now keep an eye on number seven, Walsh, come over. Now you see how he's chasing Biller? Now McDermott cuts outside, and there's Walsh going in, forcing Cessny, just throwing it out of bounds. Second down, looked like Hofstra was going to come with a blitz Brady, but now they back off. Again, McDermott coming in motion. On the draw to Santis. Has about four, and that's about it as he gets to the 45. Mike Barry shutting the hole down, number 77. The nose guard who had replaced Richard Walsh when Walsh went down. Bach continues to tick under three minutes to go here in the first half. St. John's faced with a third and five play as Malfitano comes out, and Jason Biller coming into the picture will bring the play in. I tell you, if Hofstra can stop St. John's here, Mickey Prokowski would be very pleased. On the other hand, Ricca 
John Broderick, the coach of St. John's, obviously wants to get another score before they go in. St. John's has the wind at their back. Santa's coming in motion. Sessney looking deep, looking for the sideline for DeSantis. Again, good positioning by John Walsh. John Walsh doing a nice job on this series. That time, DeSantis turning it up. Walsh staying with him the whole way. Sessney trying to hit him, but Walsh is doing a fine job, and now he's going to be back to return the punt. Sessney walking off saying, hey, these guys are being covered pretty well. Two punts for Mr. Tricario. And he's averaged about 30 and a half yards. Well, look how far back Walsh is. He's a good 45 to 50 yards back. Well, Tricario has the win. You saw what happened. High snap, speaking of win, but he gets this one away. Walsh at the 18-yard line has returned a couple for touchdowns this year. He's got the sideline. Runs into his own man, it looked like, and it gets across midfield. An excellent return. And look at the... Look at the Hofstra sideline over there. Anthony D. Samores with a fine block on the return. And number 67, Bob Dunlop for St. John's just threw a punch at somebody from uh, Hofstra, and there was a flag going down. Don't know if they're going to call it a wash, but Dunlop involved in the punt return was being blocked late, and Dunlop didn't like it, so he threw a punch. Now the officials are standing right on the 45 talking about it. Bob Rickett quite upset. And there it is, that's Bob Dunlop. And I'll tell you something, you talk about net punting, that was a 37-7 yard punt. It was a bad snap from center, the ball got caught up in the wind, Tricario bringing it down, not getting a long punt, but Walsh doing a great job coming up to make the catch, returning it back to the original line of scrimmage, throw on the 15 yarder for the punch against Dunlop, and look where the ball is. Boy, that one hurts, you gotta hold your cool. Here we go, Dean, go baby! Ray Stripe having a little trouble with the mic over there. So it is a big first down for Hofstra. They lead it 14 to 10. Rory Moss keeping it on the ground. This is Brian McGee fighting forward close uh, to the first down, about seven or eight on the play, but good uh, bit of running by Brian McGee using his 215 pound frame and just kept pushing behind Chris Lynch. Did you see Robert McKinney that time, number 81, the defensive end on this side? He saw Rory Moss uh, fake the bootleg, and he stayed right with him. That was his assignment. Here's, here's McKinney, number 81. Moss rolling left. He'll keep it. He's got speed. Turns up on Drew. Tries to make a 360 move on him. Faked himself out almost there. But he got the first down across the 20 and around the 18-yard line. And that'll stop the clock as they move the chains with a minute 37 to go. It's like a little... Spinning top. Dr. J here. <laughs> now you can see Moss is running all the way. He just tucks the ball so the defensive back can recognize it. Here it is. Whoop. <laughs> Not much. Didn't get much out of it, though. Well, got the first down. Now the clock set back in motion. 123 to go. Scully carrying for one of the few times today. Inside the 15. Wrapped up by Kenny Cobb. The nose tackle. Their second leading tackler along with Scott Biter. Surprised they're not calling timeout uh, here. I'm not surprised. They want to run this clock down and score with no time left. They don't want to give St. John's any time to, to take the ball back. There's too much time. Second and six, under a minute to go. We'll see how many timeouts they have here. They have all three. Moss looking, going for the corner out there. Coco's yellow, battling Conway for it. Conway, good defensive coverage that time on Coco Ziello. Excellent defensive coverage. Remember we just talked about Coach Rick is saying we got to get him out of this. Now watch number 44 Conway in red. Sees the ball and reacts. Almost a great catch by Coco Ziello, but a fine job by Conway. And that does... But also the Virginia was... Not out Hofstra. Can go back to it? Yeah, why not? Um, 51 seconds. You know what the guys are telling me though? They tell me the backs are dropping out. Let's run our fucking 900 right here. All right. Okay? It's 11.30 Virginia action. Tell everybody. Tell them that. Okay, right. let's go. All right, now, Pat, Pat. Offensive coordinator Pat Kerwin with the instructions. Sounded like he was saying that the defensive backs were dropping off, so let's run something underneath. Fifty-two. Robert Jet. Okay. Cover one. Two Robert Jet one. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Fran McCall, defensive coordinator with the headset on. Now you talk to these guys. You tell us what that Robert Jet cover one is. <laughs> You're the football player. No, I'm the punter. I'll tell you on no. the punt. I'll tell you the punt formation. <laughs> 51 seconds left. Cuco now comes out of the ball game, replaced by Coco Ziello. 
great first quarter, first half for Coker's Yellow. He and Kuka have combined for eight receptions. Ray Barber right now in the ball game, slot right. Walt Cavanaugh in as a tight end, number 86 on third and six. Big play here. Moss has Scully and McGee in the backfield. Has time, looking, complete upfield for Barberite. Touchdown! Late flag, probably for taunting, which won't nullify the touchdown, but will have an effect on the ensuing kickoff. That time, Barberite was singled up on the inside linebacker biter, which is something that I know St. John's wouldn't want to get. Can't talk was, was not able to make the coverage and a good pass by Moss. Touchdown is a call. Personal foul against, there he go, against Hofstra. And they'll tack it on after the kickoff, on the kickoff. So Hofstra moving quickly downfield. 44 seconds left in the first half. Our resident rip leader, lip leader. Dead ball foul. <laughs> They'll take it after the play. <laughs> Unsportsmanlike conduct, I believe, was the call. Joe Bush trying to make it three for three. Has kicked 23 of 26 kicks this year. Good. Now make it 24 of 27. So Hofstra, despite the three first quarter turnovers, comes back strong and has opened up an 11 point lead. <laughs> Ray Barberite again running down and out when he was covered by Scott Batter. We got to kick 15 yards to the rear. We're kicking off from the 20 freaking yard line. Okay, Barberite will be left of the screen. He is covered by number 57 in red. And right here, he, he does an out move and see the difference, see the separation between 81 and here's 57 coming over late, Conway also. Now, if we can keep this going, let's see if we can see the taunting bell. Okay, there must have been a taunting after the play. How about this Barberite and here's Biter? The move. Here's the move, he goes outside. Those two guys, 57 and 81, were high school teammates last year at St. Anthony's High School on Long Island. So maybe he taunted his buddy over there. And now, see, now you said sh should call timeout. Look where Hofstra is. They're kicking off from the 20-yard line. There's 44 <laughs> seconds left. You're a lousy coach. I'm telling you, you're a bad coach. <laughs> That's why I'm up here in the booth, Dave. <laughs> so St. St. John's will probably get the ball somewhere around midfield. 44 seconds, plenty of time. That's an eternity for Bob Ricker's club, but right now his club trailing by 11, 21-10. They had a 10-7 lead. That quickly evaporated on the arm of Rory Moss, who threw two touchdown passes late here in the first half. And again, keep in mind as we look at the two deep men, a key punt return by John Walsh and a late penalty against Dunlop for a punch, which really hurt on that drive. Bush kicking off from the 20. Conway can't field it cleanly. Now picks it up at the 30. Wants to get out of bounds, and let's see if he does. Doesn't matter if he does or not, because his clock will stop. So the offense comes quickly onto the field. 39 seconds left in this first half. Now let's see how Hoster plays this. The worst thing I think they can do is drop four or five guys back about 30 yards. Chesney's the type of guy that will pick them apart underneath. There is plenty of time. Cessney, 6 for 16 for 72 yards only and one interception. Russell Pager is the fifth defensive back in the game right now. Number 23. Not playing it too deep, though. They've got two, two players back there, but they've got coverage underneath. Cessney looking upfield, almost picked off, and uh, trying to make the play was Anthony DeSamores. Amal Fatano, number 83, was the intended receiver. That was good coverage by DeSamores. Bob Rickett looking and saying, telling says, look, if they drop back, throw it underneath, and that was a medium-range pat uh, pattern. But right there, number nine on the other side of Walsh is Anthony DeSamores. Great coverage on him, Alpha Town. Cessney now one for his last eight. Now they're dropping it a little deeper, the pass coverage. 32 seconds left. Bring it up late. Alpha Tano to the right, McDermott to the left. Cessney under pressure, 
throws it out complete to McDermott, and he fumbles the football as he was hit by John Walsh. Hofstra has recovered the football. George Tischler coming up with the ball. Paul Sibley's with a good hit. And there's 23 seconds remaining. Wow. This could turn out to be a huge play. Again, going to the short pass to Osterman, who gets hit and loses the ball. Walsh, couple of great plays here late. Get the ball before it goes out of bounds, so you've got possession. Tischler with a great recovery. Now look at this, three wide receivers to the right. Is he going to throw it to the left? Going to the sideline, it's deflected as he was trying to throw it. Kenny Cobb got a hand on it, stopping the clock with 20 seconds to go. Bob Ricker really concerned right here. Now you're supposed to tell me what Dave C. Hosta should have called timeouts so they have more than just 20 seconds. Now you didn't know that was going to happen. You never know what's going to happen in this game. They still have two timeouts remaining. Now a triple. It just like last time, but they threw it to the tight end left short. It was blocked at the line of scrimmage. This time Moss is going to roll out that way. Wide side of the field. Drills it in there, completed around the 25-yard line. Chris Coca's yellow with the catch. Here we go, Pat, 14 seconds. Push it in the end zone. One shot. Okay. You got one shot for it, then we're going field goal. First. We're going right. field goal, okay? okay. Joey, come here. You can kick from here, all right? Time out, time out. Joe, if we're going to take, we're going to push in the end zone for a touchdown. Let's go 1190 one more time. All right, if there's Left no touchdown, side. we're going to kick it, uh, okay? Right. But you can kick it from here. Another time out. All right. Full time out after this play. 311 is solid. No, no, no. Blue! No, I want, the ball going to be pushed forward. We don't want anything backwards. In other words, we don't right, solid we back here. Blue, blue, give me a blue. That's a great call. 1190 solid? X, 1190 solid. All right. Okay, good. No, you are not going to get sacked. No, I'm not. Now, you're going to throw it up there. If it's, whatever happens, throw it up to tight end. All right. Okay, here we go. X, All right. Well, don't tell me that's one. No, no, no. no. First read, go second read, third read. Throw a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Coach, that? what do I do? Throw a touchdown. Now, you also heard him tell Roy Moss, don't take the sack, because right now they're in field goal range. They've got one, one timeout, 14 seconds left. Moss, 14 for 24 for 203 yards here in the first half. They don't want to take a sack and get pushed out of field goal position. Huco now in the ball game, slot left. Moss under pressure, throws toward the end zone. Oh, Kavanaugh trying to go up and come down with the ball. Travis Oselmo, the smallest guy at 5'7", battling the 6'5 player there. And they'll try a field goal, I believe, right here with uh, six seconds I'll left. I bet you they're trying to talk him out of it. I bet you they're <laughs> trying to talk Mickey Kwiatkowski out of it. There's a flag on the play, however, holding hey, Trav, against Hofstra. Good job, and that may take them out of field goal range. It'll take them out of field goal range, but what it will probably do, it'll give Hofstra another shot for a touchdown with six seconds left. So now they've got to go for it because the line of scrimmage now is the 36-yard line. Add 17 to that. That's 53 on the offensive holding call. Too far for a field goal into the wind. So now three wide right receivers down here. See if he just throws it up into the end zone. This should be the final play of the half. Throwing it toward the end zone. Cuco there, and way out of bounds. And there's no time left on the clock. And that'll do it for the first half. Mickey kwiatkowski has got to feel pleased. Boy, is he one happy uh, man right now. I think he wants to come over and talk to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> he forgets that we always go to the coach trailing at halftime. And speaking of Carl, let's go to him right now. Thanks very much, Barry. Bob, in the biggest game of the season, it seems like your team has lost its composure. Just for a minute there, Carl, you're right. On the uh, punt return and then the penalty and then a the fumble, so we have to go back inside. Thank God we dodged a bullet here. We're still in a ball game, down 11. So we have to get back in there and just talk things over and get back on track. You haven't been down that much at all this year at the half, if at any times this season. What are you going to talk to them about? Can uh, they come back? They can come back, sure. We were down against Kings Point. We scored 34 straight points, so we'll be back. All right, what about Sesney quickly? Uh, you, he's not having the best of nights that we know Sesney no, to have. No, they're taking the pass away. We're running the ball real well. We have to stop the tight end on defense. That's probably the key right now. Defensively, we have to stop their tight end. All right, Bob, best of luck Thank second you, half. Thank you. Okay, Bob Ricca, coach of St. John's. You heard what he has to do. He's got to stop that tight Tight end in the second half, and well, it's been a great ball game. When we come back, we are going to have a look back at some of the greatest games ever witnessed in the metro area between St. John's and Hofstra. So stay with us. We're at halftime.
I wonder if I can get a car loan. Oh, I wonder if they'll give me a vacation loan. Join the Apple Bank family and you'll never have to wonder if you can meet your financial needs. You'll get a personal family banker, free, no bounce checking, and more. Join the Apple Bank family and feel good about banking again. Come in or call Apple Bank for Savings. We're good for you. Someone will lose. Someone must win. Only the strong will survive. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, November 10th at a theater near you. To nearly a million working men and women, it's a major employer, paying $10 billion in annual salaries. To our government, it's tax revenue, nearly $5 billion every year. To our farmers, it's a solid market, purchasing $600 million in U.S. crops. It's beer. And to 80 million responsible Americans, it remains a good part of the good life. A message from Anheuser-Busch. Go big game hunting in November on Sports Channel. Chris Morris and the Nets tip off their season against Michael Jordan's Bulls, the Boston Celtics, and more. The Patrick Division heats up as the Avengers and Devils collide with the Rangers, Flyers, and Penguins. On Sports Channel Plus, catch Notre Dame shooting for a second straight national title in two live and exclusive games. And the NHL's all-time scoring leader Wayne Gretzky leads an exciting showcase of 11 NHL matchups. November on Sports Channel. A lot to get excited about. Welcome back to Redmond Field on the campus of St. John's University in Jamaica, New York. We're at halftime between St. John's and Hofstra. Hofstra with two late touchdowns in that second quarter lead the St. John's Redmond by the score of 21 to 10. Now, we talked about how visible this game was all week long, how much impact there was. It's coming down to the last game of the season on who might get that NCAA Division III bid. Well, over the years, these two teams have played some of the greatest football games against one another. So let's take a look back at the St. John's Hofstra rivalry. 1980. But this series really heated up into a classic matchup in 1982. That was the first of three straight years of what many football fans in the metro area considered three of the greatest battles waged on a football field. Although they haven't played since 1984, the vivid memories of those wars have carried through to this, the showdown of 1989. The 1982 game was a spectacular one. St. John's won it 49-46 behind a five-touchdown performance by Todd Jamison. That day, um, I'd say I probably aged five years. Uh, who knows how many gray hairs uh, went on my head that day. It was a type of game where you couldn't relax, type of game you couldn't even take a breath. I mean, it was a, a tennis match, literally your head's going back and forth. But both teams are taking the ball up and down the field. Big play after big play. Good defensive plays, too. People don't realize it in a game like that. There were some super defensive plays, but there were big plays on both sides. Both teams continually making the big play. Fortunately, we made one more than they did. All right, Jamison with Blygin and Cass in the backfield. Rolling left, looking for the yardage. He's going to run it. Jamison to the far side, leaps in the air, and he got it for the touchdown. An amazing athletic play by Todd Jamison. <laughs> Todd Jamison to then and to this day remains the greatest athlete that I've ever seen perform in a football uniform. And the day that he scored, that team, excuse me, and I really want to almost say him, scored 49 points, but I don't want to take away from the great efforts that all of them had, the Blygins and all the other great fellows, the Samillos and so forth that played. Uh, was truly the greatest performance of any young man in the collegiate ranks that I've ever seen from Division Six to Division One in a football uniform that day. And he remains that vividly etched in my mind as the greatest athlete ever put a football uniform on. What were you thinking about when three of your players hit him and he whirly bird his way into the end zone from about three or four yards out? Well, I think three of us hit him at about the five-yard line and then he hurled himself over a fella who was standing at about the two-yard line I, I just, again, just to me that cap, the greatest performance I've ever seen of a college football player. Uh, what was I thinking? Just another great play and a great day for a great young man. In the 1983 game played at St. John's, the Redmen dominated the second half, and they led 24-21 with a little over two minutes to play. 
we had the ball. We had been driving. Uh, it was third down. We made a first down with two minutes and 19 seconds to go in the game. At that point, I think there was a premature celebration, you know, mentally in everyone's mind because we felt, all right, we made the first down. All we need to do now is just hold on to the ball and we win. What do we do in the very next play? We fumble. Pippen Hofstra makes a great play, rips the ball away from us. And I think we we're in shock. We come back on the field, and bingo, 70-yard touchdown pass. Cadella rolling, looking downfield, throwing wide open to Steve Meaney. Meaney's got it. <laughs> touchdown. He's down at the 20. Touchdown. 15, Samillo chasing it is a touchdown. <laughs> we uh, had a particular formation that day that we thought would cause them some problems, but they had blanketed that formation all day, and Samillo was playing great. He had Meaney blanketed all game. But it was a bit of a play action situation, and I think in a heated game, in a heated game like that, where you're required to be disciplined for a full four quarters, you're going to sometimes catch some people, and uh, I think we just kind of caught him. You know, he catches it; it's a touchdown, and it was just like uh, the bottom falls out. You know, it was just uh, incredible, it was an incredible feeling. It was, uh, I guess, as bad as you can feel on an athletic field, because you knew it, you saw it happening, and you just knew that it was it. It was all over. After had one first down in that second half in that ball game. Um, seven for the day, we had 22 for the day, and whatever. But it was just one of those things. That's football. I mean, they made the big plays that day, and uh, we made some big plays too, but they made the last big play. The last time these two teams met was back in 1984. St. John's was ahead in the game, 1916. Now, Hofstra coach Mickey Kwiatkowski elected to go for the win instead of the tie. But with only 13 seconds left in the game, Hofstra's quarterback, Tom McLaughlin, fumbled the football at the five-yard line. I felt he wouldn't go for the, for the tie because... Two years previously, 49-46 game, he did go. They did go for the tie, and they missed a, a field goal, short field goal, which would have tied it at 49 all. So uh, I'm sure, uh, as a coach, uh, having played for the tie and not gotten it, I think that uh, left uh, a little sour taste in, uh, in their mouths. Uh, so in the 84 game, we felt they were going for the win. There'd be no way they would try to settle for a tie again. You know, wouldn't let history repeat itself. We'd take that chance. That was my call. Uh, it was a poor call to go into the short side to feel like we did, and unfortunately, the young man fumbled. But that was not his fault, not at all. When you when he fumbled the football, you fumbled away the football game. Your initial reaction, because uh, it was against St. John's and a true rivalry. Yeah. Oh shucks. How about that? Well, I don't buy oh shucks. Well, it, there, it was probably a little stronger than that, but you know, again, it was just. Uh, a terrible ending to a great effort on both sides, and that's really all I could say. And I, you know, looking back at that time, as anything, this too shall pass, and it passed. And I look back at it as just one of those plays that I hopefully learned from. Unbelievable, you know, tremendous upset. Uh, but college football, it's all about, and uh, the kids believed in themselves, and uh, we did it. So it was a, it was a great situation. If you were around here that week to, to see the kids' the intensity on the kids and the belief that even though Hofstra was nine and zero, uh, and we were seven and two, but not a not a fancy, not a a real good seven until we were just squeaking by people and everything else, and uh, the kids just believed they could do it, and we went out there and did it. and it is resumed again here tonight. We're at halftime, 21 to 10 in favor of Hofstra, now joined by the athletic director of Hofstra University, and that is Jim Garvey. And Jim Garvey is also on the NCAA selection committee. And, Jim, this is what this ball game is all about because the winner of this goes to the playoffs. A lot of people will say, but St. John's is 9-0 and and Hofstra 7-2. and So how has Hofstra vaulted over uh, St. John's? Well, that's a good question, Carl, and certainly you have two very, very fine football teams playing tonight. St. John's.
Suns has had a wonderful season. They've got wonderful personnel. But the selection committee, which are six athletic directors from the Northeast region, take a look at about five or six factors. A uh, record is certainly one of them, and St. John's gets the nod at 9-0. But the, probably the most important thing right now is strength of schedule. And on strength of schedule, Hofstra has uh, a 2.2 strength of schedule, and St. John's is a little bit below that. The second uh, criteria is how you've done the last five games. And with wins over Wagner, uh, Fordham, Albany, Gettysburg, and, and certainly tonight's game being the fifth, the winner of this game is certainly in a very good position. I won't say that anything is a surety, but I would say that uh, the winner of tonight's game has a very, very good chance of being selected to the NCAA tournament. When will this all be decided? There are games that will be played tomorrow. Is there going to be a conference call or what come like Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon? Yes, yeah, Sunday morning, the Northeast Regional Committee, made up of two people from New England, two from upstate New York, and two from the Metro New York, New Jersey group, will have a conference call. We will recommend our four teams to the NCAA out in Shawnee Mission, Kansas. At 3 o'clock Central Time and 4 o'clock Eastern Time, there will be a, uh, I believe it's going to be televised, there will be a, uh, a live selection for the first time. And for the most part, the recommendation of the regional committee has always been accepted. Do you feel that there's added pressure on yourself, being that you're on the committee and Hofstra coming in at 7-2? and two? Do people say, well, Hofstra might get in there because Jim Garvey's on that committee? Well, some people might. Uh, I didn't vote for Hofstra until this week. I felt that uh, we had to play our way in. Uh, after the Wagner game, we beat the number one team in Division Three in the nation. I felt we were coming. Albany was a good test. Uh, Fordham last week, a Division I AA team, and a very good team. Uh, I thought we played very well. They played well. So after last week, I did vote for us fourth. There were some people who voted for us third this week. Let me throw a monkey wrench into the situation. It's almost been assured whoever wins this game will go NCAA. What happens if there is a tie tonight? Well, uh, Dave Jennings asked me that before the game, and I said I would hope that both teams would go for the win. But as Dave pointed out, <laughs> what if one team's trailing by eight? Uh, that would, I think, be a, a difficulty for both teams. And you could find that a Trenton State, whose nine wins and one tie, may vault over both of us. So I don't think anything is certain. I, we have to play our way in. There are two teams up in New England, Lowell and Bridgewater, playing tomorrow. They're both 9-0. They think the winner of that game ought to have a chance. But again, the strength of schedule will work against those New England teams. When you talk about teams, this is, I think, what college football is all about. You're here at St. John's on a Friday night, and the place is packed. This is what it is all about on this type of level. Carl, I can tell you this. Jack Kaiser and I are sitting together up in the, uh, up in the stands, and we're both delighted. When this game was made, you know, years ago, I know you've run a feature on some of the other games. This was a game that the fans in both New York, Long Island, New York City, the television folks, the newspaper people really enjoy. Our student bodies at both schools really get into it. We've got people sitting in trees and bushes on the other side of the fence. I think this is what college football in this area ought to be about. I think that Fordham, CW Post, Wagner, Hofstra, Stony Brook, Pace, all of those programs. I own is getting better. I really enjoy this. I think this is terrific. All right, this is terrific. Now, will we see this rivalry resume beyond tonight? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Jack and I, Jack Kaiser and I, have this thing set up for the next four years. And uh, I assure you that uh, we are both excited about continuing this. I have no doubt that this will continue. The only way that might change, Hofstra has, as you know, uh, been talking to the Colonial League. If we were to change our focus and be invited, which, uh, you know, is uncertain, then we'd have to take another look at that, and I would respect St. John's right to perhaps change. But for now, the St. John's Hofstra game is not only a football rivalry, we'll be back here in a couple of weeks for basketball. We're playing baseball, lacrosse, soccer. Our women's programs are playing, so we want to make this an all encompassing rivalry. You mentioned the Colonial League. That leads to another question Is Hofstra thinking in terms of going Division I AA in the near future? Hofstra has a great interest in the Colonial League. We've been playing the East Coast Conference with Lehigh, Lafayette, and Bucknell for about 15 years. They've moved, as you know, to the Colonial League. We've asked the Colonial League, would they consider us? We have not as yet gotten an, aff an affirmative reaction. If we did, 
then our trustees, our president, would have a decision to make. Jim, but at this point, we haven't made, had that decision. Well, let's wait until this game ends, and we'll worry about the schedule down the rest of the uh, years. Jim Garvey, thanks very much for coming on being a guest. Thanks, Carl. Could I sell you an overcoat and a pair of gloves? I might need one by the end of the half. Thanks very much, Jim Garvey. Okay. Jim Garvey, Hoster Athletic Director. He's been my guest. Now, stay tuned. I won't have any gloves. I won't have a top coat, but I will be joined by Dave Jennings. Halftime numbers and highlights coming up right after this timeout. What do you love about Healthways medical coverage? No bills or deductibles. I see my doctor, all I pay is $3. Healthways pays the rest. That's why you love Healthways too. Medical coverage as close to perfect as you can get. CBS FM 101, celebrating 17 years as New York's oldies station. Hi, New York. I have a lot of friends up here at CBS FM. Thanks for listening. There's only one radio station for me, CBS FM. How about you, Jay? Listen to that voice, and you can hear it on CBS FM, my favorite radio station. CBS FM 101.1. We play your favorite oldies. What do you hate about your medical coverage? Filing claim forms. Because they look more like tax forms. With Healthways, there are no claim forms to file. That's why you'll love Healthways. Medical coverage is close to perfect as you can get. When I first started playing back in 10th grade, that's all I could do was block shots. So I pretty much developed it into somewhat of an art. I never back down. I mean, you can do all the talking all you want. I'm still going to play and take it right back at you. The Mets look to stuff Charles Barkley of the Philadelphia 76ers on Tuesday, December 12th. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Nets cheerleader calendar, courtesy of Z100. Back here with Dave Jennings. We're at halftime, 21 to 10 in favor of Hofstra. Two late touchdowns, and they've really come on strong. Very impressed the way the Hofstra defense has taken Sesney out of the game, taking away the long passes. See them just setting back deep and taking away the, you know, the big plays that we're used to seeing St. John's make. They've really rose to the occasion. In fact, tonight the Hofstra offense on a roll. The numbers are are in and we see that uh, Hofstra has really double in total offense. They have and the thing that I'm very impressed with they've, they've had three turnovers Hofstra has but they haven't gotten burned by them. You would expect that if you turned over the ball three times the St. John's offense it wouldn't be close. There have been a lot of highlights in this first half. In fact Manny Tessantis you know, you don't hear too much about the ground game of St. John's because you mentioned Scott Sesney all the time and Dennis McDermott, but Manny Tessantis able to bull his way into the end zone. He's a player, and he's you can see the play right here. Tessantis is taking the ball, going to run off to his right, our left. And he's a player, as we've said, uh, on any other team, he'd be the star, but McDermott is, and Sesney overshadow him. But on the other side of the ball, too, a couple of nice passes by Rory Moss. He's some quarterback. And again, you'll see him throw it in the left corner here. Coco Ziello just running away from, I believe it was Conway. Single coverage, good pass, laying it in there. Touchdown. Quickly, adjustments for St. John's to win this wall game. Well, you know, the, the thing that Hofstra's done, they've taken that long pass away, so they've got a Hofstra, uh, St. John's has to think maybe about going to that shorter game. You saw them running the ball in the, in the, in the second quarter. See you in the end of the ball game. It should be a dandy. All right. All right, we'll be back with the start of the second half right after this timeout. If it's out there, it's in here. The 9X Yellow Pages. Why would anyone need another? Hi, I'm Paul McGuire with Dennis Oler, world-class sprinter and member of the United States Organization for Disabled Athletes. Did you know that there are 37 million disabled Americans? That's right, one out of every five Americans has a physical or mental disability. We can help the disabled by giving them the opportunity to be a vital part of our American culture by competing in athletic competition. So support the Olympic-type events and youth games of the United States Organization for Disabled Athletes. And remember, our athletes may be disabled, you're certainly not unable. Back at Redmond Field on the campus of St. John's University, the Hofstra Flying Dutchman hold a lead of 21 to 10. 
And it's time to take a look at our Sports Channel Apple Bank Small College Football Poll. Number one, Union, undefeated along with St. John's. Union entertaining Hamilton tomorrow. Number three, Trenton State is hosting number eight, Ramapo, tomorrow. Number four, Ithaca, the big win over Cortland State last week, playing at Washington and Jeff. Cortland entertaining St. John Fisher. Montclair State in the running for a playoff spot at Glassboro. You're watching Hofstra, of course. And uh, number nine, Iona, still in contention for an ECAC spot, taking on FDU Madison. Number 10, Alfred, is playing Brockport. Sports Channel's uh, and Apple Bank's Small College uh, Player of the Week for the second time this season is Scott Sesney. Last week, the senior from Albertson, Long Island, completed 15 of 23 for 312 yards and five touchdowns as St. John's defeated Georgetown. Honorable mention goes to Rory Moss of Hofstra, who led his team to a big victory over Fordham. And Dave, certainly in the first half, Rory Moss has outplayed uh, Scott Sesney. Well, we, you know, you say he's outplayed uh, Scott Sesney. He's outplayed the St. John's defense. He's some athlete, and he's a guy you've got to account for, and he's a guy that... You know, whenever you have a quarterback who is so mobile and can do so many things with the ball, he, he changes up the defensive philosophy as we see the Redmen coming back out on the field because normally you don't account for the quarterback. Defensive side of the ball, you, you don't account for the quarterback. But when you have a guy like a Rory Moss, somebody's got to be responsible for him. Rory Moss has accounted for almost 300 yards in this game. He's rushed four times for 48 yards and has had a field day, of course, passing. So far in the first half, he was 16 for 28 for 226 yards and two touchdowns. Now, keep in mind that St. John's won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so they will probably take the ball. If I'm Hostra, I defend the goal to the right so they'll get the win in the fourth quarter. Let's see what happens. Good point. Now, Rory Moss not only has given Bob Parica fits over the last five games, he has completed... 64 of 119 passes for almost 900 yards, 10 touchdowns, and only three interceptions. No surprise why Hofstra's been winning and winning big in the last uh, five or six weeks. As we look out on the field, it appears that uh, Hofstra is going to take the wind in the uh, here in the third quarter. So maybe their feeling is let's take the wind, let's continue to pile up some points, and maybe we get a big enough lead going into the fourth quarter where the wind won't be a factor. Although, remember when you and I came out here? Of course, I was here about two hours before you were. <laughs> you stuck in that Long Island traffic. I coming over from Jersey. When we got over here about 4:35 o'clock, it, it was a lot windier than it is now, so it has calmed down, but it still is a little bit of a factor. Uh, Anthony Trucario hitting that 48-yard field goal. That was good from at least 58 yards. But Hofstra answered right back, Dave, with the two big touchdown passes. Rory Moss hitting the 15-yarder to Chris Cocazello, who had quite a first half, and then Ray Barberite, the freshman, catching the 15-yard pass. Cocazello caught six passes for 83 yards in that first half. So we're just about ready to go. Joe Bush kicking off. Hofstra holding an 11-point lead. DeSantis and Conway are deep at around the 10-yard line. And the second half is underway. DeSantis will take it around the 8. 25, 30. Flag is thrown on the play as he crosses the 40 to around the 44-yard line. Unfortunately for the Redmen, Pat Mussolini will be called for a clip or a block in the back, back on about the 20-yard line, so nullifying a big return. Look for number 32 in red. You'll see him coming to the... He should come in right... There it is. There's the push in the back. And that's the penalty. Great job by our cameraman. Larry Roth and Bob DePoto's crew doing another superb job. Now that one hurts St. John's. They would have had excellent field position to begin the second half. Remember when the first half started, Hofstra was making the mistakes. Initially here in the second half, St. John's comes out with a big mistake. Almost 5,000 people here at Redmond Field. A new school record for one game. Here's DeSantis, who had 84 yards in the first to half. Shoved out of bounds by Chris Duffy, the outside linebacker. Interesting to see if St. John's comes out, stay with a shorter game, which seemed to have some success in the first half. Going with the long stuff didn't seem to work. Santis was perhaps their most effective weapon in that first half. He uh, needs only 30 yards to reach the 1,000-yard mark and become only the second St. John's player to ever do that. Dennis Blygen was the only other player. Five-yard pickup on that last play, so it's second and five. Working out of the eye to Santis behind Osterman. Turns it upfield, has the first down as he crosses the 25 to around the 27-yard line. Brought down by Antonio Desimores. 
You know what's going to happen if St. John stays with this pattern of ball? S slowly, Hofstra's going to start creeping up. And that's when you can hit the long stuff. But you got to set it up. You can't do it with just two plays. Take a little while. But if they can get in, if St. John's going to have a nice drive here, it'll affect uh, the Hofstra defense. St. John's taking what they're given. Scott Sesney had a tough first half trying to get his team going here on the drive. DeSantis again. Dives forward as he lowered his head, crossed the 30 to around the 33. Larry Brady ran into him. I'll tell you, Bob Dunlop, number 67, interior lineman for St. John's, loves to pull and trap off to this side. He did it several times and very successfully in the first half, and he's done it again here on that run. Both teams very proud of the job the offensive line has done this year. Here's a look at Larry Brady, the captain. Again to Santos, behind Osterman. And hit by George Tischler, his uh, counterpart in that uh, interior uh, linebacking core. You know, we, we just saw the two linebackers who are all right there. They're like twins almost, the way they play. Tischler, number 34, Brady, number 46. They play back, we talked about, five or six yards. Mickey Kwiatkowski likes to put them back so they can get some momentum, so they can make some plays coming forward. And here comes Tischler in to make the play. Third and four for St. John's. DeSantis now has gained 100 yards in 19 carries. Sesney looking for the sideline pattern. McDermott juggled and could not hang on to the ball at the 42-yard line. Timing pattern, the ball thrown before McDermott was actually, you know, a timing pattern before he's looking back and he turned around, could not quite make an adjustment to the ball. So Hoster does the job here in the first on the first drive. Walsh is the deep man. Tricario has punted three times for almost 33 yards. Kicking into the wind now. Hofstra is coming, but he'll get it away. A poor kick. Crosses midfield, takes a good bounce for St. John's, however, as he got about a 12-yard roll, and it'll die at around the 38-yard line, about a 29-yard kick. So Hofstra will get good field position here up near the 40 at around the 38-yard line as they lead in the ball game by a score of 21 to 10. Brian McGee scored on a short touchdown run and Rory Moss hitting a couple of touchdown passes for the Hofstra points. See if there are any changes in the Hofstra lineup. Steve Chernaski, the center, number 52. Greg Boudet, number 69. And Leif Shea, number 66, the guards. Mike McConaughey, 63. And Chris Lynch, 65, the tackle. Scully tripped up. And as he crosses the 40, he stopped it around the 43. Pete Mayeski and Rich Colangelo. On the tackle, the block by Greg Boudet, the guard. So both teams keeping the ball on the ground here in the early going. McGee had a pretty good first uh, half, rushing nine times for 50 yards, including one touchdown. Scully did not carry very much, I think. He carried only once or twice, twice in that first half. Boss looking off. Going low, incomplete. He was looking upfield. Number 57, Scott Biter, was defending on the play. The intended receiver was the tight end, Pat Dolan. Looking over to the right initially for Frank Cuco, who was way down on this side of the field. And the wide side wasn't there. And fortunately for Rory Moss, he throws a short pass because uh, the tight end, Dolan, was uh, was double covered. Chris Coca's yellow now comes in the ball game. He'll line, line up as a flanker at the bottom of your picture. Working out of the wing tee this time. Third and five. Moss dropping straight back, has time, looking and firing upfield, completed around the 42-yard line. Nope, nope. No incomplete. Ray Barberite, the intended receiver, had it for a moment, but they ruled it incomplete. Had it and then dropped it, tried to cover it up and tried to buy it, but uh, you'll see clearly, you should see clearly right here, number 81. Moss, plenty of time, drills it. Well, let's see Barbreaker down for the ball. Has it here, but oh, oh, lost it. Tries to cover it up. Oh, I got it. I got it. Officials right on it. Only the second punt for Joe Bush. 33 yards, his first punt. Dennis McDermott is deep to receive the kick. He shanks that one. That should be a big break for St. John's. And they'll get possession at the 42-yard line. Well, what are you pointing at me for? Well, what <laughs> happened on that kick? You're the punting uh, maven, so to speak. 15-yard <laughs> kick over there, Dave. Yeah, well... So far, both punters in this quarter not punting well, both hitting it off the side of their foot. And 
Wow, the way we've received an injury report on Hofstra's Richard Walsh, a sprained knee will not be back. The nose uh, tackle. So St. John's, let's see if they can capitalize with good field position up to the 42-yard line, trailing 21-10. Volvo four to go third quarter. DeSantis again into the secondary. Trying to break away from the tackle of Mike McGinley, but he picks up the first down about an 11-yard gain. I tell you, Manny DeSantis, he's the guy tonight for St. John's as uh, the passing game isn't going well, so if it doesn't go well, you turn to your running back. DeSantis, very versatile, just blasting off the right side. Good hole, almost breaks it for a big one. But a good tackle here by McGinley, the safety, coming up. He needs four yards for 1,000. Little play action. He'll screen it out, complete to DeSantis at the 45. Runs into Tischler and Duffy and brought down after picking up a round six, maybe to the 41-yard line. So Manny DeSantis getting double duty here. He came in with just amazing stats, almost 1,700 all-purpose yards, Dave, in rushing pass receiving and in uh, returns. Nice to have so many weapons on your offensive side of the ball. St. John's has been fortunate that DeSantis, McDermott, and Cessny have remained healthy throughout the year. Pick up of six on that last play, second and four. Looking out of the eye with 10.59 to go here in the third quarter. DeSantis again. Inside the 30 at the 27-yard line, Anthony Desimore has finally brought him down, another first down. And uh, St. John's on the move right here. Both the Malfitano split up to the top and McDermott down at the bottom. They're both double covered, so that's four guys taking care of two, so that leaves seven on nine. And there's your opening to Santis. Fine runner. Now with 1,010 yards, closing in on Dennis Blygen, single season record. More importantly, St. John's marching toward the goal line. To Santis again. Cuts it back. Boy, he is one tough guy to pull down. And he's close to another first down, a pickup of around eight on that play as he got inside the 20. Vince Gallia, number 54, one of the guys trying to wrestle him down. But Manny Tessantis at 5'9", 190, running very hard tonight. Carl Reuter asked me just before the end of the first uh, of, of halftime, what should St. John's do? Well, the long passes weren't there. I said, stay with the short stuff, and that's what they're doing here. He's 10 yards away from the Blygen all-time record. Second and two on this play. Again, they'll go to Tessantis. He's into the secondary, pulled down by Tischler. Another big game for Manny Desantis as Hofstra unable to stop the running game of St. John's here in the third quarter. And again, one thing we've talked about, if St. John's can continue to run like this, it's going to have an effect sooner or later on the passing game. You just don't want to jump on it too fast. Now Malfitano lines up wide to the right. McDermott to the left at the bottom of your picture. Although watch, DeSantis has been running all this time. They'll probably throw it for a score. First down for St. John's. Remember, Cessny has 31 touchdown passes, an ECAC record. They keep it on the ground, and DeSantis won't get much. Trying to get to the 10-yard line. Knocked down by Antonio Desimores coming up from his cornerback spot. See how fast Desimores go. was in there? See how fast? Now that's the cornerback coming Come on, up fast. Defense. Go, D. You got a hold here, D. Come on, right now, guys. Let's go. Santis has carried 24 times for 138 yards. His best game this year, 195 yards against Stony Brook. McDermott down here at the bottom. He's got a, he's got two guys on him, but he's got a lot of room to work with. Said they'll go to Tessantis. Tessantis has good gain to maybe inside the five and around the three. Shy of the first down by about a yard. George Tischler finally brought him down. But that sweep running effectively. Manny Tessantis. And again, something I've talked about, just keep the running game going. You don't have to jump on that pass right away. Let them set up this run, because this, this drive will have a big effect on how Hofstra does on the next defensive series. Third and two, Amalfitano to the right, McDermott to the left. Sesney throwing complete to Amalfitano for the touchdown. And I, I said
said, Manny DeSantis has been running most of this series, so chances are when they get down, and he doesn't care. He was the one who got him down there with some great offensive line blocking, but then that's when you can hit him off the town with just a quick slant, getting inside on the defensive back, a good pass by Sesney for the score. Fourth catch for Amalfitano for 83 yards. Should carry to try the extra point. It's an important one. 21-16 is the score. Ball on the way, looks good, and it is. So a very impressive drive for the St. John's Redmond. They ran it, ran it, and passed it for the score. Scott Sesti's 32nd touchdown pass of his outstanding career. And let's just look ahead to the next time. That the, there's Amalfitano right there, nice grab. Let's just look ahead to the next time that Hofstra's on defense. Amalfitano to the left side, just running down three yards and in. Sesney looking, bang, just deliver it. If you get inside cut, and that's not bad coverage, but it's just a fine catch and a nice throw. Sesney drilling that ball, beating Mike McGinley on the play. McGinley, not bad coverage. You, you know, you, you can say don't let him to the inside, but if you don't let him to the inside, he's going to go outside. You just got to be there. About Fatato, a red-shirted uh, freshman who fractured his wrist, missed all of last year, so he has three more years of eligibility. I was at a luncheon a couple months ago in the city. His dad came up and said hi to me. So, if you will, he's probably here, Mr. Malfitano, probably <laughs> I'm sure here. sure he is, but... David. That drive, eight plays, 58 yards, under four minutes. One nice thing about these games here on Long Island, here in Queens, well, St. Lawrence, that was so far gone, the parents, <laughs> they had to make a drive to come to the game. There are some of the fans, the parents, the brothers, the sisters, the, the classmates. Middle school record here, close to 5,000 people. Up the field, it comes to the 25-yard line. Mark Cox with the ball, and he'll take it to the 40, a pickup of 15. And Hofstra will have good field position up at the 40-yard line, brought down by Bobby Dunlop, number 67. There is Scott Millington. How do you like that? A big offensive lineman. He's been in on a couple of plays, Dunlop. Big offensive lineman running out of cover kicks. So the flying Dutchman put it in play. Let's call it the 41, the nose of the football closer to the 41. Rory Moss has had a fine ball game so far. 16 for 30 for 226 yards, two touchdowns and no interception. McGee stumbles but picks up about four, maybe five, as he crossed the 45-yard line. Rich Colangelo has played a fine game, combining on the stop with John Crew. Boy, Lynch and Bidet pulling out from the offensive line to lead up for a nice four-and-a-half-yard gain. What Hofstra would like to do, uh, David, is to hang on to the football here, drive upfield, keep the ball out of the hands of St. John. Hofstra leads by four. Moss looking far sideline. Conway deflects it away from Pocasiello. Great play by Conway, staying within the coverage. Coco's yellow running down just outside, just trying to release outside. Moss throwing it up, just hoping that Coco's yellow will run under. Watch Conway just make a nice play. Reach up, that's what he tried to do on the touchdown pass, but Moss was able to throw the ball a little farther, and of course the receiver was a little farther. Coco's yellow having his best game of the season, has caught 34 passes so far this year. Now Cuco in the ball game as a flanker at the top of the picture. Here's McGee, got a couple of blockers out there. Boudet was leading the block, but look at the surge on the sideline there by the St. John's Club, shy of the first down, maybe by a yard. That was a big stop for St. John's. This is an important play right here for Coach uh, Kwiatkowski. I wouldn't be surprised if they go for it, and they should measure it to find out exactly how much they need. It's gonna be very within a foot, I would say. It should be short, but about a foot. Good second effort by Brian McGee. He has gained 60 yards at 11 carries. Can you hear the St. John players screaming, kick it, kick it, kick it? <laughs> Look at Mickey Kwiatkowski. I think he's already made his decision. He's got Rory Moss just to the left there. I'm sorry, that's uh, <laughs> Wayne Morris. And yeah, they're going to go for it. Sure, why not? Mickey Kwiatkowski says four points isn't going to win the game right now. We need more. And Al Hagowski has come in. They'll probably work out of a power-eye backfield. Fourth down. 
They are one to one in fourth down attempts. Look at the St. John's sideline and the fans trying to get hot. So, I'm a giant stadium here. Walsh trying to hear the signal. McGee stopped behind the line of scrimmage by Rich Colangelo, number 56. That could be the play of the game. Colangelo, what a great play coming in from the outside. Boy, oh boy, that could be the play. Watch Colangelo, he should be right here at the bottom, number 56. Gets across fast. Bang. Got some help on the play to the live action to Santis. Hit hard and shoved down. Mike Barry, number 77, the big nose tackle, 260 pounds. And there's a look at Colangelo out of Monsignor Farrell High School on Staten Island. He has played a fine game today. Could have made the play of the game. We'll know as we progress here. Ball at the 49-yard line. Short pickup, maybe a yard, 6.57 to go. Bill Masterson now in the game as a linebacker for Hofstra replacing Chris Duffy, number 31, Masterson, number 35. Cessna with time, looking deep for the sideline. He's got a man out there complete inside the 19-yard line of Malfitano for the first down. Paul Sibley's was the defensive back back there, but Cessny with a nice touch on that ball. Cessny, beautiful touch, and Amalfitano, who's had a pretty good game here tonight, he's just going to run outside and down the field, and Sibley's just trailing him. Look at the time, a pretty pass, single coverage out there on the outside. Amalfitano just runs under it. St. John's has the momentum. 31-yard pickup. Amalfitano has been the story as the receiver. Looking for McDermott. Deep single coverage out there. Good attempt by McDermott. Paul Sibley's was right there. Again, McDermott, his favorite pattern. He'll run down to the post and cut it to the corner. Remember I talked about what St. John's would probably do. And here you're going to see the tail end of this post and then corner. Just a little bit overthrown. McDermott Almost. wishes he was about two inches uh, taller with a longer reach day, like but you. St. John's didn't wait too long to go back to that long pass, but I'm sure Casamas will get it back right here. Second and ten for the Redmond, trailing by four. 6.29 to go here in the third quarter. Casamas hit by Barry and shoved right down. Big hit by the sophomore from the Bronx, who's been a pleasant surprise. Also, Tischler coming up quickly from the linebacker's spot to make sure. So the Redmen face with a big third down play. Let's call it about 10 yards as they'll send McDermott this time to the left, of Alpha Tano to the right. He is double covered. Two players coming down, Walsh and Sibley's, to cover him tight. Sesney from the 19. Little play action. Got a blocker out there. Is he going to run? 15. Down to around the 11. It'll be shy of the first down by about two yards. Larry Brady rolled him down. Boy, now here's a call. Do you kick the field goal? I say yes. And Anthony Tricario is coming on the field, David. So you and Bob Ricca agree. Well, you've got to go for the points. I wonder if Coach Ricca was influenced at all by that last fourth down play by... Uh, by Hofstra that was no good. Now, this is a very wide angle because it's a 29-yard attempt, but it's a very wide angle into a slight wind. He's just got to knock it solid so it fights through that wind. Conway's the holder. The ball down. The kick on the way. And it is no good. So St. John's is denied. They come out of this with no points. 5.07 to go. Good drive this quarter. On the missed field goal attempt, by Anthony Tricario. And again, when you kick into a, any type of wind, if you put any error on the ball yourself, the wind will magnify the error. Tricario just pushed it a little bit to the right, and because of the wind, it went off. Now, do you think that was that one might have been partially blocked? I couldn't tell, Dave, to be honest with you. So Hofstra bites the bullet. They put it in play here, first and ten.
Corey Moss has a slot to the left, looking to that side. Now throwing wide open as Cocos Yellow has the first down at the 35-36 yard line, taken down by Kevin Conway. Conway covering Cocos Yellow, who is having quite a ball game here this evening, giving Cocos Yellow plenty of cushion. Cocos Yellow running down about 10 yards and in, making the nice grab. Watch Cocos Yellow. He'll run down and then in. Conway giving him plenty of cushion. Well, Coco, uh, Coco, Coco, <laughs> let's go, Cuco and Coco's yellow game in, each with 28 catches. Here's McGee busting toward the sideline. And he falls down over there, but picked up around six or seven yards, up to around the 42-yard line. I'm sure we are not the only ones who have ever confused those two wide receivers. And we have a, we have a player down right now for St. John's. All right, standing by on the field, let's go to Carl Reuter. All right, thanks very much, Barry. Just came back from the Hofstra sideline, walked right over to Coach Mickey Kwiatkowski and said, Mickey, why did you go for that on that last play? Why did you do that on fourth and short from midfield? He looked at me and said, big game, big plays, and we were going all the way. I said, but yeah, but Mick, why? He says, big game, Carl, have to go for it. Barry? Well, Mickey Kwiatkowski, the gambler, and there is John Krug coming off the field. We've got a timeout on the field. The Redmen trail the Flying Dutchman by four. When it comes to commercial lending, Apple means business. Apple's committed to serving Long Island's business needs. Our staff of professionals are experienced in all aspects of commercial banking. Maybe Carl can find out for us. Second and four as we resume play. Hofstra leading by four with 4.39 to go here in the third quarter. It's like uh, Redmond trying to do a blitz here. They back off. Moss goes high, and look at that catch in the air by Cuco. Boy, Conway had him all wrapped up, but Cuco, with great concentration, hung onto the football. That is a professional catch right there because Cuco going up. The pass is very high. St. John's reading the power eye, so they're bringing everybody inside. Moss, just look at the high catch here. Goes up, catches it, comes down, holds on. That is a great catch. Conway doing a fine job. They're making the tackle. Cuco, four catches for 50 yards as they'll bring the chains in. We saw Coco's yellow and Cuco have an outstanding game last week. They're having a real good game today. Boy, they've, their seasons have just about matched. Came in with the same number of receptions. Nice Can't be much closer it is. A first down for Hofstra. The, on, the only difference, Coco's yellow averaging close to 17 yards a catch. Cuco more of the possession, 10 yard. Now, again, just... Just think about this. And something I've often said, if you're going to get hit and nailed, you may as well hold on to it because it feels a lot better. <laughs> Indeed, Dave Jennings. <coughs> At the 46-and-a-half-yard line, Rory Moss with his club leading by four. Run, run. Uh, first down. This is McGee. Guy has a blocker out there, spins away, and falls forward. He was trying to follow the block over there of Leif Shea, number 66, and taken down by... Chris Farrell, the defensive back, who's in the game right now for St. John. That's the fourth time they've run that play this quarter, and it's been successful. Are those the Bob Euchre cheap seats over there on the dumpster on the far side? <laughs> Is that a dumpster right there? <laughs> it what sure looks like. Take them away. <laughs> <laughs> those are the bleacher bugs, perhaps. Second and four with 3.49 to go. Inside Scully. He has the first down to the 41-yard line. Scott Biter with the tackle. Now, did you see that play? That was set up by the last play where the two offensive linemen pull McGee coming outside, but they don't hand it to him. They hand it to Scully up the middle, and that's, that's a play that was set up by the last play that we've seen several times. Scully has carried four times for 15 yards. Now Coco's yellow in the ball game as a flanker to the left. That's Ray Barberite, number 81, who caught that big touchdown pass. He lines up as a wing to the right side. Moss looking for Coco's yellow. Tries it once again as he beats Conway. Fumbles the football. McGee trying to get to it. Looks like St. John's has recovered. Boy, and McGee had a golden opportunity. He hustled, got over there, but just didn't make the play. And once again, another turnover for Hofstra. Hasn't hurt them to this point. Omar Gonzalez, number 99, may have come up with the football. And good. Conway with plenty of room, giving Coco's uh, yellow plenty of room. Now watch what happens after he catches the ball. Does he get punched out here? 
get punched out right there. 32, McGee on top of it, can't make the play. And I think maybe Vince O'Grady, as we get a change, might have been the man who came up with the football. Single coverage on McDermott. To Santis for short yardage, maybe about four. Mike Barry, the nose tackle, stopped him. That is the fourth fumble that Hofstra has lost this ball game. Something they don't do very often. You know, looking ahead, let's say St. John's win. Mickey is going to quit Kowski and say, what if, what if we didn't fumble four times? Mm. McDermott will come out to the left side, draws uh, double coverage again. Walsh and Sibley's at the bottom of your picture will cover McDermott. Now Walsh cheating a little bit. Sesney looking deep for McDermott. He spun around, loses the football, and who's got it over there? What are they going to call it? Looks like St. John's will retain possession. Boy, Vince Gallian was in on Sesney fast. No, and you look at Sesney, I don't know what he was trying to do. We were somewhat screened off up here. Maybe we'll see it a little better here. Gallian, number 54, coming in from the outside, beats the block, a poor blocking attempt. And now right here, again, you don't have an in the grasp rule. Was he trying to throw it away here? to one of his receivers. Maybe back the tight end, Kevin Holland. Back to the live action. Big third down play. Cessny trying to get it to DeSantis. Oh. Joe Zorat, number 43, was the defenseman uh, over there defending the linebacker. And, and putting pressure on was Chris Fink. And also help from the umpire that time. DeSantis <laughs> pointing back to the umpire. It's tough enough trying to catch the ball, but hey, that's where the umpire stands. And you've got to get, you know, both of them got to try and get out of each other's way. So big play by Hofstra. 155 to go, fourth quarter. Hofstra leading by four. Walsh is playing too deep, I think, right here. Jucario punting into the wind, has punted four times for only 31 yards. He should be able to run this one back. Walsh at the 38. Trying to reverse his field, and will get to the 45, maybe to the 46, where he's brought down 28-yard uh, kick and about a six-yard return. But Walsh did a fine job coming up and catching that on the fly. If he doesn't, as we have seen over the course of our telecast here, the ball hits, it usually rolls. That's the second time Walsh has made a fine play coming up for the short punt. Scott Sesney, Bob Ricca, as we approach the end of the third quarter with a minute 45 to go. Scully. And tripped up at the line of scrimmage will get about two. Pete Mayeski, the linebacker out of East Meadow, Long Island, with the top. So it's second and seven. Now Focus Yellow has had an outstanding ball game. Lines up at the bottom of your picture. He draws double coverage now from St. John, but Colangelo backs off. Moss rolling to that side, chased by Cobb. Look at him turn it upfield. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Chris Cocos Yellow throwing a nice open field block for him. Does Moss have some speed. You can tell when he is just going to tuck it and go, he puts it away. Now, you'll see right from the inception of this play, now Cobb's going to chase 64. See him get through? There's no way he's going to catch Moss. Moss puts it away. He's gone. 24-yard run for Moss. He's now gained 72 yards on five carries. 52 seconds left in the third quarter. Second man. Cox to the short side, out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Did not pick up much, maybe a yard or two. Travis Oselmo running him to the sideline. 5-7, young man. Coca's yellow now comes in the ball game with Scott Millington as Hofstra continues to shuffle their wide receivers in the game. Coca's yellow will have single coverage against Kevin Conway. Up at the top of your picture. Millington is a wing to the right. Looking off of him. Now has time up the middle. He's got Dolan up there, and he could not hang out of the football. John Krug doing a nice job getting in on the play. Almost a catch by Dolan, releasing from his tight end position. Number 82. Almost with a grab. Moss looking off to the left, now coming back to his tight end. Almost. But Krug, number 17, with good coverage. Big play by John Krug, who apparently was banged up a few moments earlier. 
So now it is third and eight. Moss to the wide side, has receivers out there, slips, throws to the sideline, and it's going to be complete over there to Cuco, I believe, for the first down inside the 15. Pat Mayeski was the man who brought him down. And one rule that you don't have in the NCAA, and Bob Burke can't be happy right now, is in the grass. And Roy Moss showing good strength. You've got to hit him high, but just... So with 25 seconds left in the third quarter, Hofstra on the move here inside the 15-yard line. First and 10, McGee has Scully out there blocking. Falls forward inside the 10 and hangs onto the football as Scott Beider and Rich Colangelo combined to stop him. Leif Shea with a good block, number 66. Rory Moss, now watch the strength of this quarterback. He good athletic ability here. He's grabbed around the waist, but he just throws it up. There's Cuco going up for the ball and protecting. Robert McKinney, number 81, is the man who had him wrapped up, but Moss able to get the pass off. We've played three, 15 more minutes to go to determine the NCAA Division III representative watching college football on Sports Channel. How hot can it get inside? Barry Landers along with Dave Jennings and Carl Reuter. And we hope that you're enjoying the local college football here on Sports Channel. Second and five for Hofstra, Millington, and Cuco. Or rather, Millington and Coco's yellow will line up slot to the right. Scully and McGee, the backs. Going for Millington, he could not hang on to the ball at the seven yard line, setting up the third down play. One thing St. John's does when Hofstra comes out in this formation with the two wide receivers split to the one side right next to each other, one will play the inside receiver, the second will play off, and the second takes the back receiver. In that case, it was number 49, Scott Millington. But Millington, remember we saw it early in the game, trying to make the quick catch. You gotta wait for the ball to come in, then you run with it. Now it'll be Cuco lined up to the right. Barbarite, who caught the touchdown pass, is a wing to the left at the bottom of your picture. Cuco is singled. And they'll hand off to McGee. Has some blockers over there. Inside the five, close to the first down. They're going to have to probably measure, Dave. They're going to be just short. Now, remember, last time there was a fourth down play, Coach Kwiatkowski said, let's go for it. This is still a big game. Is he going to go for it? McGee coming to the left, just powering, trying to get up, and it looks like Rory Moss is going to go off to the sideline as Hofstra's called a timeout. But here's McGee just powering Krug with a good stop. Well, the last time St. John's was faced with a fourth down play, they Going shut him down. Left. Well, well, if we come, if we went Brown 1090. Uh -huh. Yes. I like that. Me too. All right. Let's Attack. go. Let's go. Let's go, boy. Yeah. Brown, Brown, Brown. Brown. Sounds like Brown 1090 would be a pass, but uh, let's see if they come out with that power eye formation. And they last time they showed it, they threw to the left side. Now the ball is on the left hash, so whoever is split up to the right. All right, let's go now. Fran McGall, defensive coordinator. Tight end side, telling his team, as you saw him talking to Vince O'Grady over there. Let's see who's in the ball game right now. Mark Cox has come out, and Brian McGee has come in on this big fourth down play. Pat Dolan has replaced Walt Kavanaugh. At the tight end spot. Fourth and inches. Cuco to the right. He is single covered up on top. Coca's yellow lines up as a tight left end. Moss. Going for the end zone. Intercepted by Kevin Conway. And for the second time in the last five minutes... St. John's has held him. Well, credit Kevin Conway, number 44, with outstanding coverage. Stayed with the receiver the whole way, and then 
Rory Moss, under pressure, does not throw it high enough, but you've got to try and do something because it's fourth down. You don't get another shot. And here, good pressure. You can see O'Grady putting pressure. But look at this great, great play. It was a short pass, but a great play by number 44, Conway. Conway's 10th interception, a school record. Cessney to put it in the air. Looking for Malfa Tano. He's bumped. Knocked down hard by Antonio Desimores and uh, George Tischler coming over to finish off the play. It'll be a pickup of around six or seven, setting up a second down play. Now, let's go back. If Hoster kicks the field goal successfully, seven. Up seven. Not second guessing. I don't mind him going for it there. Second and two, let's call it. Pick up of eight on that last pass. Dennis McDermott still has caught only one pass in this ball game for 11 yards. DeSantis has the first down as he cracks to the 35-yard line. So St. John's trailing by four with a lot of time left, 13.49 to go. Has a first down up and around the 35-yard line. And keep in mind, with both these teams' offenses, 13.47, 13.50 is a lot of time. McDermott again will draw double coverage as he'll line up as a flanker to the left side. Sibley's and Walsh have been watching him closely. Amalfitano has single coverage. Desimores to the bottom of your picture. Now keep it on the ground to DeSantis. He runs hard and picks up around seven yards. Stopped by George Tischler. Interesting to watch the two defenses in relation to the other team's offense. When Hofstra's out there on defense, they realize that St. John's has that great passing game, so they are backed up five, ten yards. The secondary, the, the inside linebackers. Then you watch Hofstra get on defense. Uh, St. John's on defense. They got everybody up on the line. Interesting transition. Second and short, Mike Passuello, number 97, has replaced Jim McKean on the defensive line. For Hofstra. DeSantis looking for the first down. Fumbles the football, and Hofstra looks like they Decimores. may have recovered. Decimores came up with it, unless it was ruled he was down. Might have ruled that his knee was down because he certainly fumbled the football. What a break for St. John's right there. Bob Ricca must have lived a few thousand lives right there. You think they'll review this play? Oh, wait, there's no instant <laughs> replay. Well, they could look up here, Dave. So the ball at the 45, where it'll be apparently a first down. Haven't moved the change yet. Now they'll move him. It is a first down for St. John's. It's Jason Miller, number 12. Bob, Bob Rick is saying, great call, great call. <laughs> now, is he down? Is DeSantis down? Let's take a look. No, he's not down. Whoa. The ball comes free. Mm -hmm. Jason Miller in the ball game, replacing him, Al Fitano. DeSantis lines up as a wide receiver to the left side. Osterman, the single setback. Sessi looking sideline, complete to Miller, the freshman, wrapped up by Desimores and taken out of bounds. But did you notice that Hofstra didn't, didn't complain? None of the players were up in the official saying it was a fumble, it was a fumble. Now, let's, uh, you be the judge. Ooh, this should be a good sign from behind. See if DeSantis is down. He's got to be on the ground. Now, he's not on the ground, but we can't see from that angle. Balls just can't see from that angle. This for the NFL, you need indisputable visual evidence. <laughs> Inconclusive evidence. Second and short. Let's call it about four with 12-16 to go. Fourth quarter, St. John's trailing 21-17. Sassy to go through the air. Quick out for Amalfa Tano, close to the first down. Desimores was defending, but Amalfa Tano now has caught seven passes for 125 yards, including a touchdown. So with uh, double coverage being given to Dennis McDermott, they're going to the man they feel that can catch the football, and Amalfitano certainly has done that today. Third and inches. Chesney will take it and gets the first down, diving for about four yards. Good play selection there. Scott Chesney picking up the first down. St. John's uh, led briefly in this game, 10-7 on a Tricario field goal early in the second quarter. And Rory Moss threw a couple of touchdown passes to put Hofstra in front. They've been in front the rest of the way. 
to Sisanis. Falling forward inside the 40 to around the 36, Bill Masterson and Vince Gallion knocking him down. When was the last time we saw St. John's on such long drives? You would think it would be Hofstra running the football. Well, if you look at the points scored and the time of possession, that's, that's what it indicates. But I think uh, St. John's has done a good job making the adjustment here this evening, going with a shorter game. Osterman and Tisantis lining up in the eye. Best deep to the sideline, Amalfitano, another catch, Desimore shoving him out. Again, Desimore's being off about 12, 13 yards, saying we'll give you the short stuff, just don't beat us deep, we won't. don't want to give up the big play. So it'll be third and about a yard. Clock stopping with the, the play going out of bounds with 11 to 11 to go. Again, McDermott, top of the picture, draws double coverage. Malfitano with single coverage. Decimore down the sideline. Maybe they'll go in a fly pattern here. Nope, they stay on the ground. Here's Osterman getting the first down. So they go to refreshment, and he's driven out by George Tischler. He's only 170 pounds, this guy, playing fullback at 5'7". There is a flag on the play. At around the 32-yard line. Apparently offside, Ray Stripe indicating against St. John's. Boy, does that hurt. Now they're arguing about Anthony Capek. See there, you can, there is a legal clip zone right there. See him? Number 66 to the left of, the left of your screen, chop the, the nose tackle. Oh, we don't have any teams, I, I know we're watching teams, but that's what he did. I didn't make the call. How do you know he's How are you kidding me? Gray saying, I didn't make the call. He's just explaining it to Coach Ricca. So that moves the ball back to the 46-yard line. They've got to go to the 31 for the first down. Big 10 yards. Third, and let's call it 15. Cessna screens it out to DeSantis. And he'll be wrestled down. McKean on the play along with Tischler. And they pick up very little yardage, if any, on that play. And they'll be forced to punt here with 10.44 to go. Boy, what a big penalty that turned out to be. And again, a chop block is, is legal within the legal clipping zone, which is tackle to tackle. You can, you can, you, but you can't come into that from outside, and I think that's what Coach Rick is saying, and they're still talking about it on the sideline. Tricario to punt it around the 45, hangs this one up high, and Walsh will let it bounce behind him into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. 45-yard kick, no return, but a net, really, of just 25. <laughs> Manny DeSantis has been the story for St. John's. I'm impressed with the way St. John's has made the adjustment. Now, DeSantis has always, has always done the job this year, but he's been overshadowed. But with Hofstra taking away the outside deep receiver, giving him off a ton of the short stuff, they're saying, hey, let's run the short possession stuff with uh, Manny DeSantis. It's been successful, but they're behind. Rory Moss keeping it on the ground. McGee, flag is thrown on the play. Could be a hold against uh, Hofstra. Vince O'Grady with the tackle, number 39. Don't like to talk about a makeup, but that flag was thrown by the official right in front of the Hofstra uh, St. John's bench. He's the one who uh, Bob Ricca and Dutch Outerkirk have been talking to about that last penalty. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Hofstra's marching back. Makeup, Dave? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, 24 Bob Rick and Dutch Outerkirk. Don't mean to imply that that was the call, but how often do you see that? Ball at the 10-yard line. By and uh, large, the officials do an outstanding job in the games that we have televised this year, and we want to thank them for their cooperation, allowing us to mic them. Out over the ball comes Steve Chernaski. On uh, first and 20 for Hofstra. They cling to the four-point lead with 9.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. Backed up to their own 10-yard line. Scully stopped by Kenny Cobb. You know, something I talked about at the beginning of the game, although it 
isn't really working the way I thought it would. I said, maybe the team that has the ball last will win. And I was thinking that in terms of a 45 to 40 game, but that could still apply here. The team who has the ball last may be the winning team. Last time they, the clubs played here was 28-24. Look, look, look at how low Cobb is, number 64, the nose tackle. Second down at 17 for Hostia. Let's see if Moss will put it up. Apparently he will. Looking deep for the sideline. It is going to be complete out of bounds at around the 32-yard line. Making the reception with Scott Millington, the young man who had dropped a couple earlier, made a nice catch and picked up good yardage. Boy, and that is a big, big reception right there. Moss buying time by rolling out. He's got to get... 15, 16 yards for the first down, throwing on the run, delivering a pretty strike. Millington's third catch of the evening. He has caught three for 49. First and 10. And Scully is tripped up, falls forward. Got a couple. Kenny Cobb again on the tackle, along with Omar Gonzalez, 99. Well, Kenny Cobb just made a nice play because he is getting pushed back by the center. And while he is still engaged with the center, going back, Come he on, reaches no, up and go. makes the tackle. Hofstra trying to grind it out. Moss has come, uh, completed 21 of 39 for 285 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Guys will play action time here. Look, he's got Cuco out there. Could not hang on to the football. Cuco running a post on Conway. And the pass thrown a little bit behind Cuco. Had to come back to the ball. Got his hands on it. Oh, he wants that back. Runs down a little bit in. Here comes the post. Now he's got Conway beat here. But see how the pass is thrown just a little bit back. He's got a belly back for it. Can't quite get it. Third and eight for the Flying Dutchman. 8.29 left here in the fourth quarter. As they lead 21-17. Moss will keep it. Moss has the first down. Inside the 45 to the 44. 23-yard pickup before Rich Colangelo brought him down. Once again, a guy like uh, Rory Moss, he's a very mobile and athletic quarterback. You've got to account for him here. Appears to be a design quarterback draw. Just steps back and right up. That was a design quarterback draw. And Moss just uses his athletic ability to take it across. He's got across midfield six for 95 yards. And to add up the passing, he's accounted for about 350 yards in this game. Inside to Scully. Scully gets to the 40-yard line. Pickup of around three. And the clock continues to tick. We're under 750. 7.50 left here in the fourth quarter. Clock only a factor right now if Hofstra scores a touchdown. And they would like to use up as much of the clock as they possibly can. This is the explosive ability of St. John's. Now Morris, the speedster, will line up with uh, Coca's yellow to the right side, as you see from our end zone camera. Lori Moss parking out the signal. And second down. Incomplete. Threw it too low, looking uh, for the tight end. Walt, uh, rather, Pat Dolan. And it'll set up a third down play with... Uh, 721 remaining. Dolan leaves the game, replaced by Cuco, so they'll keep Cuco and Coco's yellow in the ball game right now. And Ray Barberite will also be in the game. Now Kavanaugh lines up as a tight left end. Moss rolling to that right side, looking back up the middle for the big tight end. He's got it, Kavanaugh, the first down at the 26-yard line. First catch of the evening and a big one. Boy, you don't expect that type of play in that formation where the tight end's on the left and Roy Moss rolling way out to his right. You have to believe he's going to throw it to his right, but see him come back here, drills it. Number 86, Walt Kavanaugh, the tight end with his first catch and a big play for the... Flying Dutchman. Kavanaugh really got going in that Wagner game. Had a very fine game. And has been a hot player for Hofstra ever since. 6.50 to go. Moss looking out there for Cocos Yellow. He pulls away. Touchdown. Touchdown. 
We've seen the player they are somewhat picking on Conway and not only picking on him because he is the one who covers the wide receiver. And that time giving some cushion, but Coco's yellow making a beautiful move after the pretty passing catch from Moss. And now, now the clock becomes a factor in this sense. And let's take a look at this extra point. Bush up. Hofstra 28, St. John 17. Now they talked about Dennis McDermott, but Chris Coco's yellow is up to now. Watch the move after the catch. The quick release. Now watch the move here. Going outside. Now come back inside. Just splits them. Coco's yellow. Pretty. And now the clock becomes a factor because what has... No. We've got a timeout, Dave. We'll be right back with 6.43 to go. Night on the night that everyone was talking about, Dennis McDermott. And now what St. John's needs is two scores, 6.43 left. Their long, big play game hasn't been there. They have to come back to it. They need a big play here, and Conway can provide it. 30, 35, 40. And up to the 42-yard line. So they'll have the ball in pretty good shape here. And St. John's in a position that they haven't been all year. Trailing in the fourth quarter. See, what they haven't been able to do is strike quickly. So if they do what they have been doing, which is move down the field a little more slowly, then they're going to have to rely on the onside kick. Unless they get a big play here, then they can kick the ball off long. Corey Moss has passed for over 300 yards, and Scott Sesney is going to have to come up with some big yardage right here. DeSantis and Osterman are the running back. On the draw, they'll go to DeSantis. Good defensive play right there by Jim McKean, number 73. Jim McKean coming through, and right there on the first play anyway, St. John's saying we're going to stay with what has been successful the short game. McKean, big play inside for Hospice. McKean very quick, despite his 6'3", 270-pound size. Your size. Oh, Dick, before. <laughs> he lost some weight. Second and 11 for Cessna. Bot continues to tick as we hit the six-minute mark. Looking deep for McDermott. He's out there. Had it for a moment, and as he came down, could not hang on. Antonio Desimores and Paul Sibley's there. Sibley's doing a tremendous athletic job there because McDermott had the ball in his hands, and if Sibley's doesn't knock it out, that's a completion. Just watch number five. Paul Sibley's, the cornerback, come into the play here and knock the ball out of McDermott's hands. Again, he's got to come down with the ball in his possession. Here he's got it. Bang. There it goes out. Great play by number five, Paul Sibley's. And outstanding camera work by our crew. Big third down play here for Cessna. In trouble. And will be taken down. McKean was in on the play along with uh, Ayula Kanui and Larry Brady. Boy, that's a big three-play series for Hofstra. Big. Now, the one thing that Hofstra can't do right now, cannot run into the kicker. Look at Sidney coming off. He got a pretty good shot. I don't think he'll stay out on the next possession. Don't run into the kicker and watch for the fake punt. Hofstra has 10 men up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe they're coming with a block here. Doubt it. Carrier will get it away. Booms it downfield. Walsh at the 23-yard line. Runs backward. Miller wraps him up, and he'll be down as McKinney was also there, number 81. Walsh doesn't get hurt too badly on the play in terms of losing yards, but one thing as a punt returner, if you see three red shirts in front of you and you have no place to go, just put your head down and go forward, and the, the worst you can do is, is get zero yards. But if you turn around with three guys chasing you, you're probably going to lose yardage nine out of ten times. Okay, good thinking. Back up. Five twelve to go, fourth quarter. Hofstra holding on to the eleven point lead. Now keep it on the ground here. Scully gets the tackle down the sideline. He could go. Conway chasing. Brings him down inside the 15-yard line.
Well, that isn't something we expected. You have to expect that Hofstra's going to run the ball here. Number 40, the big fullback is Jim Scully. Just takes it off his left side. Good blocking at the point of attack. And now he's gone. Missed tackle there by Travis Oselmo. And now you can't believe Scully's going to score. But watch how far he goes. Now you think Conway might try to knock the ball out. Doesn't do it. 67-yard run for Scully, his longest of the year. And they'll keep it on the ground for Mark Cox. And he gets to around the six-yard line. Running into Steve Nieves. And this one has all the earmarks of a big Hofstra win here. And Bob Ricca knows he's in trouble. Is it? No question. Clock stops with 4.38 remaining. Hofstra with second and short. Back in the game for St. John's defensively. McGee. attempt here for Bush and Hofstra has exploded right now to an 18 point lead with these two quick touchdowns wow and now they put St. John's in a position of having to go for a long ball not necessarily 60 yards in a shot look at Mickey great job, great job. The blocking, or look at this hole. I'm just in standing up. <laughs> How do you like that? As Mickey Kwiatkowski yes. saying, we're kicking. <laughs> that means we're going to the NCAAs. Now the game is not over, but the way this game has progressed, it'll be very tough for St. John's to get back in it. Scully has gained 91 yards, McGee 81. So they've combined for about 170. Gad, Rory Morris is running. He's gained at least another 60 yards. Their total offense must be over 500 yards for the game day. Keep in mind, an 18-point difference right now. That is two touchdowns and a field goal, but two, one of those touchdowns has to have a two-point conversion. Push the kick off here. Conway into Santa deep. Conway. At the 12, 25, he runs out of bounds as he spun around there, stopping the clock with 4.28 to go. Antonio Desimore is uh, running him out. Our thanks to our spotters who've done a great job today. Mike Booty for St. John's and Jamie Meyer for Hofstra. And thanks to the SIDs of both schools for St. John's, Frank Rancanello and we have the official making the call down there. Offside against St. John's. The ball's way up by the 35. Now it's either a re-kick with a five-yard penalty or St. John's will keep the ball where it is. Now they're calling the officials over. They want to get a new ball. Sounds like they're going to refuse the penalty. Now, how can the receiving team be offside? They have to stay 10 yards from the ball until it is kicked. Once it is kicked, then they can cross that 10-yard line, which would be the 45-yard line of Hospital. Nick Dermott and DeSantis line up to the left side. Destiny looking that way. Now we'll run it. 35 will go out of bounds, pick up of around six, but it'll stop the clock, more importantly for St. John's, with 4.23 to go. And again, you don't have to get 60 yards at a time, but you want to get your 20, 15 yards and move it downfield. Hostra, on the other hand, wants to keep the ball in bounds. They don't really mind the score right here as long as it takes a little while. Scott Sassney checking over the line. 
Looking up the middle for McDermott. Double covered. And incomplete. Again, Sibley's, and this time Decibor's, uh, or rather Mike McGinley was there. Got to be impressed the way Hoster's taking McDermott out of the game. Absolutely. And McDermott just running downfield. You'll see two white shirts. Just McGinley, Sibley's. Now a lot of offense for both clubs. Hofstra has gained almost 600 yards total offense in this game. St. John's 332. Destiny on a big third down play. Has to get the first down. He dives and his knee went down, I believe, shy of the first down. Shy by a yard. But you know what's going to happen here. You know, and, and again, this game isn't over, but what about Hofstra? They turned the ball over. They went for it twice on fourth down, didn't make it. Fourth and about a yard. Clock ticking, 340 left to set it. And he will not make it, and that should be the ball game. We're killing him now. We're killing him now. He quit. They quit. And Hell, we've been 9 1 three straight years. It ain't bad. Yes. Antonio Desamor is with the big defensive play. And with 3.34 to go. You heard him say, We're going to run the ball. And Mickey said, Yeah. St. John's dream of an undefeated season about ready to come to an end. Ari Moss keeping it on the ground as Scully who had that big run earlier. Down the sideline, he may go. Nieves drags him down inside the 10. Oh, Harry by Scully. 